Hey, Bikeaholic, Zero 3D has a wide variety of innovative products for your Harley-Davidson motorcycle. Affordable chrome, lighting, and comfort products. These guys ride, sport riders just like you. Head over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store. Check out their full line of Zero 3D products. And as Rob Law Dog mentioned, they also have not just chrome, but some black stuff coming out. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Once you've had Rick Rack, you'll never go back. The ultimate motorcycle luggage rack solution. Forget those messy straps and bungee cords. Go strapless with a Rick Rack quick attach luggage system and quality bag. Head over to lawbuddingbagger.com forward slash store and get hooked up. Look at Midway Airport, not O'Hare. Right Ross, now. Ross is recommending. Oh, God. <laughs> Ross, oh, he cracks me up, dude. Thanks for blowing up the chat, Ross. <laughs> I just love it. And uh, you got the two juveniles over here. Uh Popeye, uh, you got Popeye over here, and of course, you got Speedy over here, and they're giggling over here like little schoolgirls. Now, if shit, I was open. I was invited. I was going to book my flight tonight. (laughs) If there, if there's no other reason to become a patron member than the the awesome fun bikers in the chat, just laughing and joking and having a ball in there, man. Um, that, that, that's reason enough alone, uh, uh, to, to become a patron member. Cause you guys in the podcast format later, it's great, but you won't get to see a lot of the interaction and some of the, just the really funny shit that happens in the chat, dude, <laughs> <The> real funny, <laughs> funny shit. stuff, dude, these guys, this is bikers, man. This is the community. Just a bunch, look at a bunch of bikers, um, on a Sunday night here, just chatting and laughing and just, just having a good time. So, all right. With that said, I say we just get started here. Let's do it. Let's get it going. And, 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 and now, straight from the Law Abiding Biker Media Studio, out of sunny Yakima, Washington, we bring you another episode of the number one listen to motorcycle podcast. We're in your head. We're in your head. We're in your head. We're in your head. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Mm, we got the live event going on right now. This is part two of two. Mm-hmm. It is a live video broadcast. We've got all our patron members in the house. They just stood by while we took a quick intermission. But two of two, welcome back, you freaking bikeaholics. This is the podcast for the motorcycle majority. The big MM, also known as the 99 percenters in stereo right there. Popeye, mm-hmm. Law Dog still in the house. They haven't killed each other. Um, I'm not too sure that uh, after the last episode, Popeye is allowed back maybe on not. the property. Maybe not. Or maybe not of uh, Law Dog. Um, but anyways, it's real dicey. You should listen to part one of two if you don't know what we're talking about. It's dicey. It's dicey. But uh, oh yeah, that's right. By being here live, by listening to the podcast, you are part of what we call the Big MM, the 99 percenters, the motorcycle majority. Which one was it? Biker Revolution. The Biker Hashtag Revolution. Biker Revolution. Son That's of a bitch. Like. <laughs> yeah. Got yeah. all the other ones. Yeah, nailed it on part one or two. You just I did. mutilated it there. That's right. We do have just one question for for you before we get started. What in the hell are you waiting for, bikeaholics? Get on your bikes and let us take you on a, another wild ass ride. Yes. I messed part of that up. <laughs> <laughs> but you got most of it. I got most of it. And to start the episode, uh, Popeye has uh, got himself another whiskey, so should just get better from here on Oh, out. <laughs> yeah, it'll get better. <laughs> Might have to shut his mic off. That's happened before. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But uh, welcome back. Ryan Urlacher here, your host of the Law Abiding Biker Podcast, and your high tech redneck. redneck. There you go. In stereo, I got uh, Dumb I can't and Dumb figure out the there. map yeah. system. Yeah. Right. Okay. Hey, so thanks, guys. This is part two of two and uh, we had a ball it went a little long but that's all right i know you guys love it um live event the live youtube broadcast you can only get it i know i say it if you're a patron member but i know a lot of people a lot of people listen to the podcast format and don't know what i'm talking about so right now we are live if you're listening in the podcast it's probably months later because we batch process but have no fear if we do do it live live chat and we have all this uh personal interaction um we are still putting them out as regular podcast um, events and uh, but I I guarantee if you listen to the last episode it's something you want to get involved in with the live chat because uh, bikers just talking worldwide right now in the chat and having fun brings a lot of um, different stuff to the show different uh, topics and and uh, things that people bring up so we appreciate everybody being here again you just become a patron to do that lawbuddingbiker.com forward slash patreon and uh, you'll get you know uh, access to that so 
part two of two, our 4,500 mile 10 day trip to the Midwest. In part one of two, we covered up to day, did we finish day four? So yeah, we're going to start with day five here. And uh, the debacles are only going to get better. Uh, there's a lot of funny stuff that happened that we're going to uh, reveal to you guys. Uh, some more mechanical problems and a whole bunch of stories in between. And of course, whatever uh, comes up in the chat and whatever everybody brings up. Quick housekeeping. Don't forget, guys. I know if you have a Gmail account or you're on YouTube right now, if you have a YouTube username, you have a YouTube channel, whether you like it or not. We need you to go into your patron account and add that YouTube channel URL in your settings. That way, when you comment on our YouTube videos, which are coming out all the time, we can see our patrons that are commenting because we'd like to interact with you first and answer any questions that you as a patron member may have. So we're just going to dive in because it's a long night because we are batch processing. We already did uh, part one and uh, I got to get it done quick before um, these guys have any more beers or whiskey um, or it won't make any sense at all. <laughs> I think we should just, just pop my laughter. Thank you. Thank you for the courtesy laugh, dude. All right, let's thank these patrons. Let's do it. Maurice Navu, maybe, of Weir, New Hampshire. Chris T. Garden of Loosby, Maryland. I think MD is Maryland, isn't it? Yep. All right, he's a top-tier member. And Elijah McKay of Henniger, Alabama. Donna Gross of Holt, Missouri. Perry Jackson of Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Top-tier. Mm-hmm. Joe St. John of Freedom, Pennsylvania. And Chris Thompson of Middleborough, Massachusetts. Is that M.A.? Yep. Is that mm-hmm. Maine? Uh, Massachusetts. 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 Maine is M.N. Whatever the hell they are. Top tier. And Dale Davis of Pipperton, Tennessee. Or Pipper- Pipperton, Tennessee. He's a top tier member. Chuck Darby of Lubbock, Texas. There you go, guys. Lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N is how they got signed up. That's right. Pledge a certain amount, purpose, content. No risk to you because you could put a monthly cap so you don't go over that family budget. We certainly understand that. Get benefits. Uh, you get in the private Facebook group. You get T-shirts. You get access to these live events. If you're mid-level or you above. You get special benefits. You get special benefits. Friends of benefits. Maybe. Maybe. And uh, you get the live chat. And up to, if you're top tier, like some of those, you get access to our uh, for purchase premium videos up on request. Also, one more thing. Make sure that you sign up if you're a patron. I know you get it in your patron accounts, but also uh, lawbettingbiker.com forward slash live on that page, upper right-hand corner, there is an email list. And uh, the only email you'll get by signing up for that list is when we go live. And uh, just another way to assure uh, that you are being notified because we certainly love having the chat as it is and uh, blowing up and still going strong here in part two of two. We're going to pick up at day five. Before we do that, real quick, I just want to mention a new free video because we're always putting out new free videos. Bates, Taser, Motorcycle Riding Boots and Shoes. It's a biker review. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lawbindingbiker.com. And uh, uh, I'm going to, I'll just put it actually forward slash whatever episode number this is, is how you get that because it's a rather long URL, Bates Taser Riding Shoes. Um, we're going to talk more in the future about riding gear, but I do a lot of that stuff on YouTube. And I actually rode these shoes last year to Canada every day. And I also rode them every day to our Midwest trip. I love these shoes. I've reviewed a lot of different riding shoes because I'm not a big fan of boots. I like to be able to jump off my bike and be able to walk through events or to hotels or run Ubers or wherever we're walking to baseball games like we did in this trip. Um, And I never have to worry about big clunky boots. And these riding shoes really do offer a lot of protections, sometimes more protection than some of the boots that you would think just regular leather boots. So um, that was one review I did and I rocked them again and I, I rocked them today. I was out ride today. So there you go. Let's get right back into it, uh, Rob or Popeye. We are on day five. We just finished in Papillion, Nebraska with the patron meetup and ride day. And we discussed that in part one or two. So we're picking right back up here. Lee and I are no longer leading this trip at this point in time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was up front. No, Led, I, 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 no I went you were not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so no, we had to let sleep. it go. No, that wasn't that wasn't because of the other thing that we had to slow down because ghost. Remember this bike? Uh-huh. Oh yeah, yeah, ghost. Yeah, okay, so what's ghost riding? It's like an O two two. I know it was even an older two. than my O five. I don't remember what it was. It's an though. older eighty eight cubic inch yeah. wide, or was it a soft I can't, soft? I don't I can't apes, no windshield or Just, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so we had to slow down. So me and Rob had to go back. 
mm-hmm. <laughs> to maintain our speeds. Correct. Yeah. So we rode from Papillion to Kansas City um, in the rain for the three hour ride. Was rained pretty much the rain whole like damn a time. Bitch. It rained like some bitch. It rained like some. The bitch. last twenty minutes, I think it didn't rain. Yeah. Okay. So, but it rained off Brian. Rained bike. like a some bitch. <laughs> and so on the way there, we're having to go slower than what we normally would. Normally, we're moving by oh, Jason traffic. Ro- Jason we're- says it's a fat boy. Sorry. Okay. Oh, Jason, what are you doing up, Jesus dude? He's, in there. He's probably working. Yep. But we're freaking moving by. It's a fat boy. Uh, we're moving by traffic normally. But on this time, because like he's 88, five speed, we're going, we're a little slower. Remember, we got passed by a big truck. Cost me a headlight. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's right. Call. The rock came up. That's where I was going with this. Yep. Rock came up and uh, trashed your front headlight. Well, how much was that? So another debacle. Well, luckily, I know somebody at the lab store. He might know. I limped at home and then right. I got one for I don't know what are they four hundred dollars four twenty five yeah you got a uh, so ghost our zero three vision X LD four hundred dollars <laughs> exactly <laughs> can send it via PayPal yeah uh, yep. I'll take all forms of payment <laughs> <laughs> even check will be fine cash in an envelope either way <laughs> so yeah it rained like a sun bitch it was actually uh, shattered yeah, yeah. yeah it was, that was one of the worst days that we had as far as weather went. I mean, we had a couple of other days of kind of rainy but which really for the Midwest well yeah. no this wasn't our worst day we got lucky. The next day was our worst day. You think so? No. Oh. The next day rained for quite a while, but it was never heavy. Yeah. Like yeah, heavy, yeah, crazy. Maybe, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, we were right on the edge of that storm the next day. But we go ahead. Were. Yeah. So this was out of Papillion, which is just out of Omaha. We went down to Kansas City, Missouri. And yeah, just before hitting the hotel, once again, every bike problem that we've had along this trip happened within we're 10 miles. So this lucky. this was two miles within the freaking hotel. And we're going along, and Brian, that you guys know from the lab store, otherwise so we're all known trashed as goat. from rain, and it finally cleared up, right? I, yep, yep, yep. And I'm we're in the I'm more. in the back, which is a rarity, but I'm in the back, and uh, he had kind of crossed one of the tire swaths, and I was looking up ahead, and I saw kind of a puff of smoke, and you know, I was like, "What the fuck was that?" And I, thought, I saw well, it too, maybe, and I was way in the back. Yeah, and I thought, well, maybe it was just you know he rode through that tire swath, and it was some water come you know flying up off of the road. But, uh, you know, when we get to the hotel, what had happened was he had lost a cooler, an oil cooler line to his oil cooler, and it had thrown freaking oil all down the back of his bike and all over the next couple bikes behind him. Sturgis oh, Jeff. Oh, I got it bad. And yeah. I was in the very back. Yeah. Sturgis Jeff and, and B-Real were both fucking covered yep. in oil. They're both covered. Yep. But so luckily we get into the hotel. We're only two miles away. Now here's the luck of this, right? We're two miles away from the hotel. We're able to go and pull into there. He makes a phone call covered by warranty. They're down there. By the time, I don't think he was even off the phone with the dealership and the truck is rolling in to pick him up. But now how lucky is that to be two miles away and not 50 miles outside of a dealership? And like I said, because of that rain on the road, I would have never thought two shits about it. Yep. I just thought it was something kicking. You know, I thought that was water kicking up off the road. If we're 50 miles outside, uh, I thought he uh, backfired uh, or, yeah. you know, some weird deal. Where I'll just, tell you what. When I thought some water. And like I said, if, if if we're 50 miles out and we keep riding, that motor melts down. Oh, you know? he would have been done. When he stopped. He didn't even the, know. The oil dripping off his back fender was like turning the faucet on. Yeah. Yep. I was like, holy shit. He was very lucky, guys. That motor, any other circumstances than, than that, he would have burned that motor. Yep. Because he didn't know. He just kept riding it. And the weird thing is no idiot lights came on. No, nope, not until he stopped and went to turn it back on, uh, turn right. the ignition on, but didn't turn the bike on. And it was pretty much a void of oil at that point, guys. He yeah. He had a quart in the bottom or two quarts in the bottom of the pan. Yeah. Said. So That's he's three quarts low. So lucky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, crazy. And our bikes all got absolutely trash. Once we started looking at them, we all realized that we had oil all over. Over helmets, R- face masks, yeah, and Snow- Scott Snowman S- was in the back. Snowman it. rode down from Omaha with us, and Snowman was going to Kansas City. And he says that he had uh, oil all over his bike, and he was at the back. He was with me because I was riding next yeah. to him. Me and you were in the back that day riding right yeah. next to him. I don't when think I, I had uh, oil on mine, but I walked around the front of the bike to check the oil damage. That's when I found out I took a rock to the headlight. Yep, Robbie shattered. There's a goddamn headlight. slow we were going though. I stopped take a piss. Remember that. And I still caught back oh, up yeah. in the group. Yeah, you did. You pulled over to rest area or <laughs> I something. Did. I was like, I where's he going? I got a piss. Yeah, just Lee, whatever. <laughs> yep. Mm. So, yeah, we're just a few minutes outside of the uh, of the hotel. So we uh, had the truck there, like I said, yep. within minutes, literally less than 10 minutes, that damn truck was pulling. I don't even know if he's the off dealership the phone. truck. Yeah, dealership truck. Yeah, pulling in, loading it up, taking it down to get fixed. Like I said, I don't know if he was off the phone yet. 
and that damn truck was pulling up, loading up the bike and taking it out of there. Yep. It was fast. Squared away. It was fast. Big dealership. What was that dealership? I got it on my documentary film but i that's don't that's the only remember. place that, it was kansas city uh, it was kansas city yeah. is that it? i don't Straight know up. which one it was right. i don't know it was it was it was kansas city missouri because that's the only place that i bought a uh, a shirt from i always try to get a shirt from the furthest place away that nice. we go and that was the furthest dealership east that we were going so i bought one from there but other than that um we didn't go to any further east than that I south know. but not east no. yeah right south right. not east yeah so yeah he uh uh, goat got stuck at that dealership for a while and he was hanging him there and scooter and, scooter went yeah. down there with them. Yeah. And I was like to send a guy down yep, with them. That so they're crew not decided to kind of hang out together. And the rest of us went to Royals game. He said, Hey, you know, you guys want to leave the bike and just get it tomorrow or whatever. And they all decided to kind of hang out and just, uh, do their thing. And well, scooter went with his army buddy. Remember that? Oh yeah. 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 He oh, did eventually yeah. after he got his bike. Cleaned. Yeah. They went and had gay butt sex like they used to oh, back in the day. God, dude, <laughs> we're just, just on fire. <laughs> Probably fine. Only getting better in episode two of two here. Um, now I will tell like you back in the old days that and Brian, they're, they're tank mates. If the, if the, uh, if everybody's wondering what happened. So Brian, uh, go, well, we're not going to go into two total. Oh, Jesus Christ. Of what exactly happened with what? We were, we were talking about scooter and stuff. All right. We're not going to talk about that. What happened? Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we're a train wreck. We're going to need some charts. <laughs> now, you know, I guys warned you in my update. It's Stick quite, figures, maybe? I think I said something nice, like it's quite a dynamic <laughs> with these two in here. Um, but Brian, <laughs> what is it? Is it a 2000? It's either, I think it's a 17 road glide. Yeah. You're yeah, be- yeah. He's a 17. Yeah. Right. He had a live got to see your belly, by the way, right That's there. That's fine. All right. The, uh, Jesus Christ. Now, right. remember they had the um, a, a warranty issue on that thing. Yeah, so they had a they had a, a recall, recall on the retainer clips on the oil cooler lines. Yep. He took it in and the dealership looked at it and goes, "Yeah, you're probably fine." And put in the computer. Pretty that sure the you're war- probably fine. Yeah, oh yeah, probably pretty sure. <laughs> they put in the computer that his warranty work was completed. So when he went to the place in Kansas City, they said, "Well, the dealership where Bull you live." Shit. Says that they did it, and he goes bullshit. I was standing there. The guy walked out, looked at it, and said, "You're probably fine." Yeah, it's a visual inspection. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> fine, right. dude. So yeah. the <laughs> clips were supposed to have Shouldn't been replaced. Fuck it too bad. <laughs> yeah. So he so he lost that, and literally that could have burned that whole motor. Now that would have been a totally different trip had Brian burned his motor right there, guys. So be aware well, of that uh, recall. Flight home. Yeah. Right. Uh, or you know, if you're lucky, uh, rent a bike or something. But mm-hmm. um, super expensive doing that. So. Be aware of that, guys. It's a, it was a brand new 17. It has a recall item. It's the oil cooler lines and the clips on there. And uh, it did happen to us. It absolutely did happen. And we're just very lucky because Brian had no idea and he kept riding it uh, right into the ground, uh, for lack of a better uh, term there. So um, get that in. Get that recall done so it doesn't happen. And he did. He did try. That wasn't Brian's fault at all. No. So um, at this time, uh, we went to dealership or, or did, went to do laundry. We yeah. did, but did uh, didn't uh, uh, Jonathan show up at this time? Oh, so uh, I didn't put it yeah. in my notes. Like I said, not I'm Jonathan. Jonathan you guys, did. I, no, he you left. Got back didn't prior you? to the prior. Okay, we're so get, we went. To we're the, just getting ready to go to the. Oh, game. Yeah, we went yeah, to the yeah, laundry yeah. mat and got our laundry done. Came back and we're waiting for the Ubers to go to the game, and that's when he pulled in. That's a. And lot. I said, has anybody checked? Uh, um glimpse lately because he sent us a glimpse where you can track mm-hmm. his location mm-hmm. and right when i was bringing it up on my phone we heard a bike and looked over and that guy pulled in he rode mm-hmm. from washington central washington to kansas city in a straight fucking shot non-stop yeah. gas stop that's only. gotta be what 1500 miles yep he did an iron butt, that's impressive right? oh he did with two. to the association though yeah he did two right. of them right yeah he did it in uh, i can't remember how many hours but guys yeah, a machine how many it dude. takes Right. Yeah, exactly. That, so, that amount. Jonathan. It was like 30 something hour, wasn't it? Uh, I don't know. It was over 24, I think. Yeah, I think so. But anyway, yeah, pulling into the, I was impressed. We've got talks of. I was impressed. I, yeah. not, not a shit ton impresses me. I was impressed. Yeah, I was too. Yeah, but I, I couldn't believe great. it. So oh, he, fuck. we're going to, I'm going to have Jonathan. He's from uh, the Tri Cities, Washington area, and we've had him. Uh, we haven't actually, I've, offered him a podcast multiple times, but we're going to get him in here to talk about that whole iron butt association thing. And he's into that. I can come in for that. I've done a couple. Yes, you too. I'll have both you and Jonathan. That's a good call um, to talk about that and what it's about and what it entails. But nonetheless, uh, he did. And that's a motorcycle uh, trip hack. It seems simple, but Rob's pretty good about that. We've done it in the past when we went uh, to different places is try to get yourself at least an afternoon 
um, to do a laundromat run. Me, Be Real, uh, Law Dog, I don't know who Rick, else. Rick, Rick and I did Rick ours was together. There. Yep. Make sure, because you have to pack half the shit, dude, you know, uh, as you normally you do. pack for five days or something. Yeah. A lot of times go- if I'm going on like a week trip, I'll pack all of it. Um, yeah. six, some guys six, will pack for three days or something. I'll pack for a week and I can get all of it in there. Yeah. Six or seven days you can make it. You know, yeah. you get a pair of jeans for going out and a pair of jeans for riding yep. or whatever. Exactly. But, but you go 10 days. Yeah. It's nice to have a laundry yep. day. Yep. So you don't have to pack as much. And then, you know, right. okay, I'm going to make it through day five. And then I know that I've got a laundry mat day and I'm going to be okay. And I'll have all fresh clothes. So there you go. Um, we did. We hit the old uh, uh, laundromat and uh, got back in business. And those guys were over at the dealership during this time, getting his bike and scooter. Was spit shining his new motorcycle. Make sure he didn't have any oil on the front of it. Um, but uh, where did the Bristol guys go? Oh, they just we went down to the they, the, they went to the, the baseball game. There you go. Talk about this. So this. yeah, we decided to uh, we work. What the hell are we gonna do tonight? Because originally the plan was we we're gonna go tour the. Um, the Harley. plant there for the Harley Davidson dealership that got shut down. So now we're like, well, what the fuck are we going to do? Well, the Royals were in town. They and actually, a lot of us are baseball games. It was their day off and they had a makeup game. That's right. Yeah, yep. my bad. That's right. Yeah, they had a makeup game. And so we decided to go down and watch a Royals game on the makeup. And uh, I was I was impressed with that stadium. It, it, one, of the, one of the older stadiums. And I thought it was new. Yeah, it's I thought it done was up new. nice. Really nice. Out of town, so you don't get all the traffic. You don't have all the, the bullshit that brings, you know, or you get a lot of times in a big city. Yep. Um, and so we all Ubered down there. We Ubered yep. down and we ended up out in left field at the bar. And I actually, yeah, some of us did, actually ended up in the back of a pickup truck. Yeah, some of us didn't leave on Uber, <laughs> but we're not getting, we're not there yet. But you guys yeah. got to stick around for this story, but I just wanted to give a little prelude to that. So we got some video. It's hilarious. Dude. Uh, chill out. <laughs> oh my God. Dude. Yeah. So, so we, uh, I thought you were giving an intro to something. I, so no, I'm just, that's yeah. called a hook. So we I know it was people. a hook, but we're going to tell a story. I thought we you were right. doing one of your little oh, no, uh, no. sales pitches. No, 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 no. Anyway, I'm so not selling pickup sales trucks right now. Yeah, so we're out in, uh, yeah, we're out in left field and uh, normally this is a, uh, uh, it was like I would ni- think 19 bucks to get in or something. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It's pretty cheap. I hold don't on, understand hold baseball on, that much. Yeah, hold sorry. on. So, yeah, you don't have any idea about any sports. I don't. I just paid my money and got in. To watch the touchdowns? Yeah. I kind of hit a touchdown. Uh what I was impressed with Midwest Bible belt type of stuff. Right. We walked into this thing. We come cruising up. Um, we're there just before the national anthem plays. Oh, we all yeah. come walking in, we grab a beer and as we're coming up through the, uh, the kind of the main walkway thing, the walkway, the main gates coming up to the field there, the national anthem starts. Nobody moves. No one. Yeah, right. Everybody, oh, I'm tracking what you're saying now. Yeah. Everybody from the ticket booth to the beer stands to anything Amen. is silent, Hats not off. moving. Yep. Hand over heart. And they are listening to the American National Anthem. America. Bible Belt. Loved it. Love now, that. You're right. Fast forward here a week later. Oh, I got God. home. I'm, uh, it was either the day after I got home or the next day. Uh, within two days of me getting home, I'm at a Seattle Mariners game. Seattle's liberal as fuck. Mm. Yeah, and we come in not support and I am. I went out. Uh, me and my wife were uh, with the in-laws, and um, we went to grab a beer real quick. And we're coming back, and I'm trying to make it back to my seats before the national anthem starts. I'm patriotic as fuck, right? And so I'm trying to get back there, but I'm like, shit, we're not, we're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. And we get stuck to where I can't even see a flag. And so of course I stop. And shit, there's people walking all over the place, doing talking. all kinds of just to tell you, boy, oh, yeah, doing fuck, all kinds yeah. of shit. I'm like, it's bullshit, fucking. Yep, goddamn Seattle. That's very totally good point, man. Yeah, because yeah. I didn't even recognize it because it's just something I always do. Yep. Well, you like kept I, filming. You were the one dipshit the whole place. But <laughs> dude, what's better than filming the national anthem yeah. at a? Yeah, well, you were walking around game. getting close-ups of us, oh, tears you running down our face. Was. Was. Shut it. But no, fuck. absolutely <laughs> impressive. Like I said, yeah, you, you could have heard a church mouse fart in there everybody's quiet nothing moving i was impressed yep it was cool good yeah. call um that was fun i'm not a huge baseball fan but whatever um oh, not a huge sports fan but we're out russell, left roberts. Field. russell roberts has got a he, he's drinking a whiskey right in field. the chat room night he's f the liberals just, just <laughs> russell just, 
<laughs> Snowman. <laughs> and R- Russell Roberts says, America. Hell yeah. Uh, See, we ended up out in left field on that game. That was pretty cool because, like I said, we had that bar kind of all to ourselves. And uh, God damn, I spent a lot of money on booze that night. Yeah. That pretty beer's much. not cheap. The tickets were, but the beer wasn't. Jesus, dude. Oh, boy. Another reason. Maybe I don't attend a lot of those because that was ridiculous. But we got... No, the cool thing was we got the seats in the bar overlooking the thing. Yeah, like, right which on is the, normal when it's right busy, on the right? bar rail. Yeah, we were you know hanging what, over the deal. You know what happened to me that night? I said, well, fuck this. I could, here we were. We'd spent the last three to four nights taking Ubers. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we shouldn't have. I got you, Jason. Right. Field. And yep. I said, Bullshit. I'm going to make this Uber pay for itself this You're time. You're in Kansas City. I'm in Kansas Lots of City. Pickup trucks. And, this, and this thing, I'm going to make my. I'm going to make it worth my while. I got a little fucked up at that game. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Somebody kept buying me IPAs, and it was hot. It, it was tasted, hot, it was and I was hot. dehydrated. It was really hot. And I kept drinking yeah, IPAs. They were delicious. And, well, they were delicious. By the time I was done, um, I was glad th- that I didn't get in the pickup truck, but I'm glad you guys got video of it. So, let's so, just go tell this story. All right. So This is ridiculous. We're in you guys got to hear City. this. We're in Kansas City. It, it what do you do in Kansas City? <laughs> what do you do in Kansas City? You do Kansas City barbecue. Hell yeah, you do. So I start taking a poll in the little bar thing we're at, and I say, "Hey, what's the best barbecue in town?" And this gal that was talking to Chill Howie says, "You know, fuck Chill Howie, whatever." Chill <laughs> Howie. Yeah. So then I talked to somebody else, and they said, "Oh, this other place." And I talked to this guy, and he said, "Whatever the name of the place we went to was." And I said, "Hey, you know, just you two here. He's with his buddy." He goes, "Oh, I got my daughters here." So you drive a pickup? He goes, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to give us all a ride down there? Well, I can. Good Jesus. Well, fuck yeah, I said so. Are you insured? <laughs> uh, we didn't ask that. Yeah, I know. A yeah. couple, couple people were too pussies to get in the freaking back of the pickup <laughs> so truck. So out of eight or nine of us at the game, four of us got in the pickup and got a free ride down to the barbecue joint. Chill Howie. And there was... Chill uh, Howie, Brad, me, and Leroy. And, and there was some... Uh, at least some, beat you there some, by at least two beers. So some some footage taken <laughs> there was, uh, in the back of that there truck, and I have it. And <laughs> that's actually funny shit because I was watch. I was as I was downloading, putting it on a hard drive. So I'm like, that is funny. Yeah, well, Ryan's shit like, you right guys there. are gonna die in that back back that pickup, and I go, he's fucking sober. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. like, no, no, you you guys can write. I'm not gonna get <laughs> ejected. Ryan, Ryan first I'm, wanted to film our death, and I was, no, I did, I was I okay did. with that. Make sure somebody's recorded when you guys get ejected. Oh, we will. Make sure it's in slow motion, please, so that I can use that footage here, um, here we are riding on motorcycles for thousands of miles and he's worried about being in the back of a fucking pickup truck true. and getting yeah. ejected going Good two point. miles by some guy who i have no idea <laughs> stop who he is. traffic yeah. oh yeah he was cool <laughs> oh yeah yeah i'm sure he's so, very experienced he, he was a big truck supporter so we liked him immediately <laughs> oh yeah who who uh laid in who, not laid into but give his daughters a lesson on economics was that you or was I, that I probably was me there. i'm kind of a little more political probably than you are well no you were brad Anyway, we get out of the pickup. And, yeah, I was talking and these, about four hundred one ks and where these, the, and yeah, these girls are young. At. You know, they're liberal. And well, these young don't know by any, like sixteen. Yeah, they yeah, don't right. know any better. So they get out, and her dad says, "I've been wanting to tell him that for three years." <laughs> so oh my he god, loved, he so loved I, us. I, 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 I try to give him a twenty, and he says, uh, "Won't you boys drink some beers on me with that money?" <laughs> nice, Thanks a lot. Dude. I didn't charge us a penny. I told man, I give Kansas him, City, yeah, give him the old shake, uh, you know, kind of the bro hug, and I said, "Man, I got I, I, this Bible Belt. I go love this Middle America shit, right? Middle America, man. Uh, it's different out there. You oh, know? right, yeah, and it's great. See, like well, that right there. It's you know, I mean, it's kind of you know, we're we're a lot different than the west side of the mountains, even here in Washington State. But yeah, you're freaking middle Middle America flyover states. They call them. I love that shit yep. out there, man. It's awesome. It was. And that story Good right people. there. Good people. That story right there is enough to just be like, that's freaking awesome because that would be hard to do around here. You yep. know what I mean? Or not here in Eastern Washington, but Western Washington for I sure. I wish I knew who that dude was. We'd give him a shout out. No doubt. Yeah, dude. he was awesome. It made for a good story. Yep. Made for a good a documentary. Barbecue. Got some good information later on the night. Arizona yep. writer oh, says yeah. that's going to be a good. Bus boy helps out. Oh, that's going to be good on the documentary. Arizona writer says, yes, it will be. Um, Arizona writer, we need your real name. Yeah, he's very involved. Yeah, very we involved need a real YouTube. name. Or, and if he's in, we need a real name. And if he's on the Facebook <laughs> deal. Yeah. Otherwise, you're off here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we're kicking you out. So that was a late night. Now, we ended up going after the Royals game, and I don't have notes here. We ended up at a barbecue place. Uh, I don't remember the name of it. Um, well, I can probably look it up. Dean Branch. Are you in the Facebook group, Dean? I can't remember. It was good let barbecue, look, but it's a popular place. Yeah, yeah let me look remember. it up. There's a, it's a chain. You guys were there once we got there with the Uber, right? Yeah, we were two beers in. Yeah, you were two beers in and and like 16 ribs. Yeah. And you're <laughs> just we're laughing at you guys. Where yeah, you been? Yeah. You should have taken the pickup truck. That was straight up. <laughs> Jeff was not for the pickup truck. I'm not no. going to lie to you. No. Um, Jeff was not okay with the pickup truck. But 
Um, yeah, if you if you find that. Yeah, but he'll he'll ride 130 miles an hour at Sturgis with no yeah. helmet on. Right. Yeah. yeah. And and yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, all right, let's do. Uh, we're getting into day six here, and uh, we've got. If you think the pickup truck was funny, we've actually got some uh, funny stuff coming up. But let's do this really quick. Hey, Bikeaholics, searching for new and exciting motorcycle products? Zero 3D has just what you're looking for. Check out their wide variety of innovative products for your Harley-Davidson motorcycles. Zero 3D's got your back with chrome, lighting, and comfort products. No modifying, cutting, grinding, or welding for an easy installation. That equals less time installing, more time riding. Zero 3D has a design team with over 40 years' experience with a passion for design and innovation. I've gotten to know those guys. They're badass. These guys are bikers, care about bikers just like you. They pride themselves on great customer service. Got a question? Get in touch with them via email sales at zero 3d.com give them a call 715-808-0027 zero 3d has distributed in the united states by drag specialties in europe by parts europe and zodiac and in asia by twin art check out your local harley dealership ask for zero 3d parts better yet Mm -hmm, that's right help support us head over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store check out our full line of zero 3d products there you go Mm-hmm. Anything going on in the chat, or should we move right in? Gates Barbecue, to a Gates Barbecue, great place. Makes sense that it was new because it burned down. It looks like. Oh yeah, and yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's, and it's yeah, a I mean, chain yeah. down there, though. It's oh, like, is it? Yeah, there's multiples of them. Yeah, from what the, I was talking to yeah. the owners yep. or the people that work there. Uh, some loaded guy down there owns that, and some other businesses. I forget. We're having a whole <laughs> conversation, but clearly it didn't make my notes. But I'm glad we remembered that. They got so. good service there with good information. Good information, which uh, put Popeye back at the hotel at about 5 a.m. Actually, we're not actually sure what time Popeye got back, but it was it was late. And uh, so some of the guys went out. And well, had a- the, here's the quote. We're get we're going back. Are you guys getting in the Uber? And Popeye goes, fuck you guys. Have fun. <laughs> and he stayed and the rest of us went back. Not everybody. <laughs> but not everybody. Who stayed with you? A couple, couple uh, of Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee guys One stayed of them. with them. Yeah. L- mm-hmm. LT. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. The yeah. rest of us went back. They looked like, like <laughs> look like shit the next morning. Look like shit the next morning. Oh, yeah. The problem was is that Ryan encourages this behavior. I do. Yeah. Oh, you, geez. you like me I kind do. of being the ambassador. Yeah, I do. I you do. know, I ambassador. Think, right. <laughs> I do. I take these guys out. I know out. that he's going to take care of business. Yeah. I take these guys out, you know, and we do some drinking. Show them a good time. Show them a good time. And we see what type of guys they are. Exactly. You know, and uh, yeah, Ryan's like, he just loves it. I love do. Because he goes to bed he's got all this filming and bullshit to do. And, and uh, yeah, I stay out and, you know, we have a good time with these guys and, and see what type of dudes they are and bullshit and have a good time and, and i get to hear the report goes. in the morning right it's nice to know you're right i'm glad you brought that up yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> which parts do you remember which parts you don't right so yeah no i, I that's a good point dude i love it i love it because uh, a lot of it's club stuff and and the guy's just having it just a, a, a having a good time, time man. There. so yep. day six uh yeah that was uh what, what are we looking at a 550 mile yeah. uh nine hour saddle dude time. that day felt like it took forever hot as fuck well, it rained for a while and then hot as fuck. And then oh, yep. that's right. Remember, Dude, we put on rain miserable. gear. We put on rain gear in the morning. Yep. And I mean, you're looking at a part of the freaking country. Be ready for that in the Midwest, you know, man. Oh, Have yeah. your fucking rain gear. Yeah. It's you, it, weather changes so fast there, but it'll be, you know, 95 degrees, hundred percent humidity. Like I was saying earlier, you know, I remember being there in basic training, some of the best lightning storms I've ever seen out of anywhere. And we got that to see some country. that day. We did. Off in the distance. You know? Oh, shit. Yeah. Remember we were riding and you could see off in the distance. That's another thing. So we're heading from Kansas City, Amarillo. Um, we're heading down that uh, vicinity there. They had some major warnings uh, yes, they for did. thunderstorms and shit coming through the area. Thought we were screwed, dude. Oh, yeah. They were talking about damaging uh, hail to vehicles. It's a good thing we're on motorcycles, so we didn't have to worry about that. But <laughs> right, yeah. damaging, damaging hail, hail to vehicles. To, to cages, motorcycle riders are just going to die. Yeah. yeah, and you could see off in the distance. Remember, there was freaking lightning and shit going off, and the skies were just black, just yep. black. And it was, uh, yeah, it looked like a mess. That was a good damn thing that we didn't have to ride through that, but hot as fuck, and we'd put our rain gear on because it was a little rainy in the morning. And then, shit, we had to peel that off, though, right away because, I yep. mean, it was, you know, 90, 100 degrees. A couple hours we rode in, and yeah. I think, just to Something be safe because like yeah. we were in and out, in and out yeah. um, of the rain. Yeah. And then you start heading towards Texas, and and then just got hot as fuck. 
And just, just, I can't actually, <laughs> Damn. I'm done. Good yeah. way to sum it up. Hot it as did. Fuck. It, it was. It did. You know, went from, well, yeah, a little bit raining, a little bit raining, you know, and just hot as fuck. And all in all, I think both of you guys agree that, um, that all in all this trip, I expected way us to get screwed way more than we got screwed with rain and storms. Yeah. We just yeah. somehow skirted around. I mean, we yeah, did. it rained and we had our rain gear on, but I've been in way worse rainstorms, like yeah. like where you can't even ride five miles an hour. That's what I was expecting. I'm like, we're going to get caught in one of these. We're going to be hiding under under an overpass. And we just, 10 days, we just didn't. We like got so blessed yep. to get around all that. And like we say, we could look off in the distance and it looked like- We, we barely missed one in Cheyenne. We skirted the edge of this one <laughs> this did, day. Dude. I mean, just, we're so lucky. That one in Cheyenne, golf ball size hail, we'd have been fucked. Oh my God, dude. Yeah, we'd have been hiding under an overpass if you can find one. So for a Midwest trip, we are very, very lucky. Um, yeah. th- 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 that's all we got. So, yep, it just got dry, 100 plus degrees, guys, riding through the middle of nowhere from Kansas City to Amarillo, Texas. And I don't have a lot to say. I do say, that the Kansas, uh, it was fucking tolls. Remember oh, on those roads? Holy shit. God. What a mess. Have you got a system? Have you got I've, a ticket in the mail yet? No, I've been waiting for a ticket in the mail. I haven't seen shit. Cause I have a receipt in my wallet. Yeah. The guy said, Oh, save your receipt. If you get anything in I the mail, seen you shit. Could, I know. Uh, the, you know, uh, the reason I say okay. a ticket, so, hold on. so here, that. let's explain, explain what's yeah, going yeah. on here. Okay. We didn't purposely so try to get tickets. You show, you show up to these tolls, right? You, so we're, we're bombing down the highway and all of a sudden here's a toll road on, on, you know, in the middle of the interstate and they stop you and you got to take a ticket. Now, if you get off of the interstate, if you get off the highway, when you get off of that, uh, that exit, Turnpike. that whatever, that's where, you, that's where they charge you. Now we rode it pretty, basically all the way to the end of the damn thing. Yep. And then you go to pay. Well, the fucking thing doesn't take dollars. It's it won't give you change. It won't give you change. It doesn't give you nothing. We're there, trying you can't to follow well, no, the law. Here we are in 2018. The damn thing don't even take a card. If you want there to pay by two, card. Two lines. One was to put dollars in and get change. And the other one is if you had the change. Yeah. So, and, but the one that had the freaking get change, it don't give you change. And you just had to throw it into a <laughs> basin. <laughs> right. I don't, but yeah. I never really saw much of a freaking, even a, uh, like a camera system that if you did run the damn thing now up here in our area, if you're in the freaking the, the carpool lane and you're running and you don't have authorization to be there. Remember Frisco? I got a ticket. <laughs> yeah. Cause it was an accident. Yeah. Cause I went through the thing. They have yeah. cameras. I didn't, I'm so not understanding the system. Yeah. I accidentally wrote through one of them. I got a ticket for that. So up here, there's all kinds of cameras and shit. They'll freaking, they'll send you a ticket in the mail or whatever. I don't even see a goddamn. I know. You know, uh, uh, I've been waiting for it because I have yeah. the proof. They, no the cameras. guy said, just send this in. I go, hey, the dollar machine wasn't working and I just threw some change because I was in a hurry, but I don't know if I, I, I might've been 10 cents short. He's like, oh, here, just save your receipt. If you get anything in the mail, you just send that and, yeah, and so we'll delete it. it. The so, biggest effed up system that is. I've ever dealt with. They're, they've got the change deal. It's all, you know, they got bars over it. So you can't even <laughs> put dollars in to get change Correct. back. And I am saying, screw it. I'm like, what the hell am I supposed to do? Well, I ended up riding around the damn. Uh, it was a sensor on the ground. Yeah, there's a right? sensor on the ground. I'm like, well, shit. You know, I want to give you my money, but if you can't allow me to, I'm, if they I'm, have video cameras, they try to. They saw us trying for ridiculous. like five minutes trying to put pissing dollar bills, off, pissing off traffic behind yes. us. Yes, you know, we had traffic piling up behind us, trying to figure out how in the hell to freaking get you know uh, money back. We messed up system completely. It, the tolls there, they suck. They have freaking. No idea what the hell they're doing. But anyway, so we got we we bombed down down on down the road. We uh we swung into a McDonald's there. Got we a quick were lunch. Quick on we this, were we this we were putting time. the miles down, man. Mm-hmm. And we had to make it all the way to Emerald. How many miles were we looking on this one? Six something. I'm well, sure. Well, that was before we did the Route 66 fucking detour. Oh shit! Beat the shit out of me. Yeah, I mean this is a 600 something hour day, or 600 miles something days. Yeah, a lot of a lot of miles. Um. Yeah, we did. We took a, uh, a little detour there on the on the Route 66, Elk City, Oklahoma. Uh, got off. This was uh, uh, Sturgis, Sturgis Jeff. Jeff just yeah. wanted this, and which was cool. cool. It's cool to be able to say you Route 66. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to order some more signs. I, I bought the one sign from the, oh, yeah, he's, and, you know, we got one up here on the wall from uh, New Mexico. I bought that 66. on the trip. Yeah. And, you know, we so we wrote it in three states. We wrote in Oklahoma. New Mexico and Texas. Right. We right. hit we hit sixty six in all those states, you know, so for we did some time some amount of time. Texas so we can say that we were at all. I'm trying to think. Oklahoma. So and, I need an I need an Oklahoma yep. one. Oklahoma, New Texas. Mexico, and Texas. We wrote it all. Yep. 
Texas um, a detour just because of construction wanted yeah, it. So it worked right. perfect. Yeah. It did. It was perfect. Yeah, you're right. And so, uh, you know, I wish we would have hit it in Kansas. There's a small section in Kansas. We probably should have detoured just because there's a very small section in Kansas of 66. It's a real small section. Yeah, we did hit it in Oklahoma. You're right. Yeah, in Texas. Yeah, yeah I'm trying to just recollect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, uh, you know, it's kind of cool to just say that, you know, you've hit 66, kind of a uh, historic route, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so we do we, we detoured off onto that and uh, got to ride that a little bit. And um, where the hell was it going with that? You guys, we don't, no side, one knows. You sidetracked me. <laughs> oh no! no. <laughs> so we rode. Si- anyways, we rode sixty six. We rode sixty six. Is this we the day? Uh, this was the day. Oh, so we that's stopped around sixty six. We got store. on their shit like Rob was saying. Shitty, shitty road through there. You know, beat the piss out. Oh us. man, I go to the yeah. chiropractor all I the time. My, my back's kind of fucked up, and holy shit, riding that thing because. Every ten feet or so was a bump. It was horrible. Oh man, that my section. back, my back was smoked. That's Just where we stopped in that little me. city, though, right? Didn't we stop in that? Uh, yeah, to get the, the picture, the Elk City, Oklahoma. We got the Route sixty six sign, that huge sign. That's where we got our pick. Was it? Yeah. Yep. I got it right here. Elk okay, City. Okay, so it was before. I don't think. I don't think we we're in Oklahoma. When we took the picture. I it could have been Oklahoma, but it wasn't. Um, it was before Elk City that we took the picture. Um, well before actually. But really? it was a really shitty area of sixty six, and holy shit, yeah, my back was my back was messed up from that. Yeah, yeah, Killing that was me. that was. Um, so laid down the miles, getting in late yep. to Amarillo, Texas, and I'll tell you that Amarillo by morning. Oh yeah, you up know from San Antonio. Antonio. I know that song. Everything dude. that I got is just what I got on. Good. What do you say there, Rob? Rob's texting me. I ain't got a dime, but what I got horrible. is mine. What's that? I ain't rich, but Lord, I'm free. I'm looking at the... Amarillo, I'm trying to find the Route 66. Morning. Okay. Amarillo. No, I'm pretty sure it was Elk City, yeah. dude. Yeah, Elk City, Oklahoma. That's, yeah. where, that's where we that's got That's where the picture yep. was. Yeah. That's that's the big yeah. sign. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. Ju- and we rode on that section just, what, 40 minutes before that? Or that correct? section was good, but remember before that quite yeah, a ways was The one shit. that beat the shit out of us was about half hour before this, so it was in Oklahoma. Yep, it was in Oklahoma. Okay, good. And that's where we saw the Oklahoma State Trooper at the re- at the bathroom yeah, right after yeah, we were, we were, with them. Yeah, we were asking him about better sections and it does it, is it always as shitty or whatnot. And he says it's not really that well maintained. Yeah. And then remember we got off again and we were looking and there was another small little outpost police station. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I remember, what, was that the... That was before we got on it at all and they told it and then... You and Jeff pulled up there, and the like, whoever you talked to said, "Get on it just around the corner." Yeah. Right, right. That's oh, when we first that's got right. on it. Yeah, yep. and it was shit there. That's right. Yep. Yeah, yep. That's right. Good call. Uh, so coming into Amarillo, Texas, late at night, I would just tell you that there's moments in this trip where I remember certain things. I definitely remember this because it was a very long day, but <laughs> we came in at sunset, and I got some of the most beautiful. Uh, 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 film oh, yeah. and pictures failed of the sunset. Uh, just, that was cool. Just going down. And yeah. these, some of these pictures that I got guys, uh, unbelievably amazing. And I got to share them with some of the guys in flatland, Texas, that but, will make the documentary. Yeah, that was some flatland, Texas area. It was. That may and, make you know, the they thumbnail. Were telling us, we, yeah. Remember we were uh, uh, talking to that sergeant there in Amarillo at the steakhouse. And he's like, shit, you guys got to go to West freaking Texas. So he goes, it's way more beautiful. But man, yeah, out there on those freaking Texas plains there, just Texas flatlands, whatever the hell they call them, up in the panhandle, yep. where the fuck it is. And just, you know, that Texas sunset, absolutely beautiful. It started feeling good because the temperature went temperature down. Because it was hot as fuck. Because it was over day. 100. Oh, it was like 107 God, right it across was, oh, yeah, it was hot as fuck. It was actually 108 there. at one point. Yeah. But yeah. It just kills you riding that many miles, you know, yep. in, uh, in that heat. Not as bad as uh, downtown fucking... New Albuquerque. Oh yeah, Jesus true, dude. Fuck. Right. Yeah, we didn't fucking tell that story. We haven't got there yet. We haven't got there yet. That's why I didn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> nice cover, bro. That was smooth. I'm just saying, dude. Jeez, we, you, you get one for that, dude. That was smooth as shit. All right. Um. So, so now, we. Uh, yeah. T- so the deal is, the is the whole trip. Oh, we want to go to this uh, big Texan restaurant where you eat the 72 ounce steak. It's free. By the way, this will make a big part of the documentary. Oh fuck yeah! Well. <laughs> So we have Justin usually is our contestant for this kind of shit. Oscar. So, mm-hmm. Oscar. So we end up getting Scooter to do it. So oh, I 
we set Scooter up. He's and it's the same guy that licked the fucking server tray, licked the fairing. We told him his dinner's free that night if he does it. We're all gonna pitch in and buy it. So he, we've got them all set up. You so guys gotta we, meet Scooter if you haven't met him. The big Texan closes at ten, but to do the challenge, you have to be there at nine. So we're. Oh, we're yeah, getting there right call. at nine we're, because we called ahead. We're pushing it. I mean, we're showing up. We right. did call ahead. Yeah, well, yeah. No, somebody we did called that. ahead. Yeah. Oh. And we got there right at nine and we signed him up right away for the 72 ounce, four and a half pound steak, potato and bread. Was there a salad? I don't remember. No, just potato and bread. And uh, so no, there's more in potato and bread. Dude, there wasn't. Yeah, there was. It was a potato and bread. No. Here, let me go to my picture. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah, just wrong. The, the the main point being a like, 72 ounce. Like okay, he's got bread. Wrong. And a salad. Oh, he does and a salad. steak. Wrong. <laughs> and and a, oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. No bread. Baked potato. Where's the, there's, is there bread on it? There table? was bread too because I got pictures of it, dude. But there is a salad on his He's got to eat it all, right? Yeah. yeah. So he's got to eat that. He's got to eat the bread, the potato, and the steak. Not yeah. just, that's a large effing steak. Mm-hmm. Not going to lie to you. And we looked at it before. That's a lot of meat. Oh my God. You're just oh, like, yeah. it's insane. Meat. And uh, he was nervous about it, dude. Scooter mm-hmm. was, he, he oh, really yeah. wanted to produce, dude. He did. He did. And he knew I was doing the documentary film on it too. Oh, so yeah. I know that I put a little pressure on him. I feel bad, but hey, all jokes aside, we're going to bust his chops here in this podcast because that's what we do. But at the end of the day, he did better than I would have. He just, mm-hmm. I, I can't actually talk bad about the guy, dude. He gave it his all. And, uh, um, it was a, just, it was gross to watch. Honestly, it was just, <laughs> it's just gross, dude. It's just, oh my God, dude. Um, filming that. And, um, they set you up on a stage. If you haven't been there now, uh, what do you say about the big Texan? What would you suggest to people, dude? I, I have my opinion. That was an amazing place, dude. It was like a old school side of the road <sighs> attraction. They had a bar, they had a restaurant, they had a gaming room, they had a candy station. They, they have, have pictures that, that they change the eyes when you walk by, like old Western pictures, oh. and it turns into a skull. That place is amazing. Yeah, it's like a roadside attraction. You take your kids there, they'd have a blast. I mean, homemade ice cream, all kinds. I mean, it was a cool place. It's really a boardwalk they've got set up. They got misters out front. They got cowgirls inside and mirrors, and they got a little wax museum, wax figures, and it's. I can't believe how much stuff... I didn't realize that's what that place was, the Big Texan. I really didn't research it before the trip. I hadn't either. But I will tell you, that is a must stop. If you are in Amarillo, Texas, you absolutely, if you are a biker out there, you must stop. Now- You must eat at the Big Texan. You will love that experience. What we found out at the end of dinner when uh, uh, Amarillo Sergeant came to help him take the money out. Oh, yeah, the sergeant, police officer. He's a good guy. Yeah. This limo pulls up with longhorns on the hood. And we said, oh, no, that's cool. That it's a local limo company or something. He says, no, the steakhouse owns it. If you're within, was it five or 10? Do you remember, Lee? I don't. Five or 10 miles of the we'll place. They'll come, they'll come yep. get you for free and take you there for I dinner. Yeah, I didn't even know yeah. that because I was yeah over messing around. That's good to know. Um, what did you think, uh, Lee? We, we both- I liked uh, it. You got to stop there. Like I would go there again. Like that is just a cool oh, yeah. environment. Yeah, the whole environment was very cool. Uh, everything that like the decorations and shit that was in there, uh, yeah, really cool. I mean, just a cool place. The atmosphere, the people. Remember, even like our waitress, we sat there and talked to her forever, and yep. she was talking to us about uh, the gal that had won the competition and how many steaks she did. How many how many stories do you think she has to tell about that a day or a week or whatever? Right. Yeah, I'm sure she tells that damn story all the time, and she acted like it was the first damn time she told somebody. You know, that right. this little gal had freaking eaten three freaking steaks and Scooter can even one. Right. But, right. <laughs> but Pussy. Like, <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, I mean, very cool people. It was a good time. Um, and I ordered a, j- just a off the menu, <sighs> yeah. you know, steak. Oh, 16 steak ounce steak or whatever. It was great. Steak was uh, yeah. great. The bread was, I mean, there was a good meal. Yeah. yeah. I'm oh, glad the you bread mentioned was, that. Bread was fantastic. Yeah. I remember that. I remember the bread was good. Yeah. Didn't eat it. Too many carbs. Oh, Save it for beer. Whatever you're needing. Um, I did it all. Yeah, I drink the beer too. Fuck. <laughs> on vacation, whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm fat. Fuck. I don't care. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I'm glad My you mentioned that. Definitely got tighter at the end of this trip. Get yeah, right. Because even if you don't do the steak challenge, the food is amazing. Yeah. And so, biker, that is a must bite. We don't say that all the time about a lot of stuff. Was like, it's pretty good if you get a chance to stop. This one is a must stop, must eat, must experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, my, my meal, uh, love the meal. Now they put you, we had a, a uh, this is interesting. As we go around the country more and travel, um, 
the bigger law abiding biker media gets people oh, yeah. recognize you, Popeye, people recognize Law Dog, people recognize they recognize me. Recognize Popeye? They, of course they do. Son of a um, bitch. People recognize. So we literally walked in this place and that will make the documentary film, but we were just oblivious and I was filming and this was a, I had a lot of cameras out just because uh, Scooter was doing the steak challenge and I knew I needed to capture it. But some guy just out of the blue from across the freaking restaurant he, uh, gets up and, and says, uh, what do you say? Oh, he goes, Ryan Erlacher, I'm a subscriber. Yeah. So, um, oh, Jesus Christ. Don't suck your own cock. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> I can't. It's way too big. I've tried. It just, I can't fit it in. But um, God, the, uh, and I, I wish I remembered the gentleman's name, but I can't remember. But he's with his wife, and I went yeah, over. That was very cool. It that was, was cool. That was awesome. Here we are in Amarillo, Texas. Out of the blue. And dude freaking recognizes your YouTube channel. That yeah. was, that was badass. That it was, was really cool. And so I got to meet him and his wife briefly. And uh, so very cool. If you're listening, if you're a listener, I'm sorry that I forgot your name, but I have it on film somewhere and it will probably uh, make the documentary. But they put Scooter up on a stage. If you don't know what the big Texan and you are on a stage in front of everybody, they have like clocks, like professional digital timers and you get an hour, right? To eat this steak and everything and you have to finish it. And if you do your meals free, Brad be real mm -hmm. bought it for him be, that, was, be, that was awesome that was awesome be That's real cool. said hey i'll buy it for you if you eat Making it that big california money oh yeah oh all kinds of money <laughs> high roller like an a straight up high roller be real hope he listens to the podcast <laughs> he, he does he does <laughs> if he doesn't hear it tonight he'll hear it but um scott did really good and i forget oh he ate Four. all he, he well and and <laughs> we're gonna bust his balls he sucks yeah um but he anyways didn't, he didn't complete he it. didn't complete it and so he's a loser yep but uh there was times up there and then we're gonna move into day seven so we can get done with this podcast but there was times up there you'll see it on the documentary where he's literally pale mm -hmm. um he has a pitcher of water and he's drinking the water. He almost had to puke in the garbage can a couple times. It was a horrible sight, honestly, because I was like, this <laughs> horrible guy. Horrible sight. I, it was a Kids were running. I think all kinds of shit. I think he regrets having it cooked so well done. Because really? even the lady, yeah, the lady told him, have it done like medi uh, medium, medium, uh, not medium, no. Uh, it was still pretty Medium pink. rare. Medium rare to rare. She said the 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 less cooked, the better. And his was pretty cooked from what he had said. Yeah, true. Yeah, you're supposed to get it's a lot. a whole lot. strategy yeah, to it. Oh, yeah, yep. I, I still can't believe this little 125 pound gal ate, yeah, ate three of the of goddamn them, yeah. things. And then Crazy. she finished off with pie, right? Was it pie? I it, wouldn't want to sleep with her, her that pie night. Or I would not want her pie. Uh, some kind of hair pie. I don't know. <laughs> I would not want to sleep in her bed that oh, night. Oh, no. <laughs> just, just like, yeah, yeah. just trying to three get all, of, Three of them, though. And then, the, yeah, they said she washed it down with pie. Jesus, dude. It, it, it is a kind of a strategy on competitive eating, but whatever. He uh, ate all but 17 ounces, but hey, good job. And uh, he got the loser shirt. Um, he, he gets to walk home with the loser shirt that I did not complete it, which was pretty funny because the waitress there was totally busting his chops on, uh, on that. She was playing right along. So let's Milf. do this real quick, Milf, and then we will get right into what? Uh, day seven. Oh, yeah. shit. Are you searching for the easiest and quickest attachable luggage system for your motorcycle? Rick yes. Brack has just what you're looking for. Well, there you go, Popeye. Forget all those frustrating straps that you wear and bungee cords that can come loose and slap your paint. Slap your paint? Mm, check out one of Rick Rack's awesome quick attach strapless luggage rack systems. This father-son team uh, has something really special. They designed something really special that you can't find anywhere else. Yep, and these guys ride, so they truly understand the needs of bikers. The Rick Rack quick attach system is strong, durable, secure, with a lockable system. Also check out their full line of quality touring bags to accompany your quick detach system. Once you use Rick Rack, Rick you'll Rick. never go back. What are you waiting for, bikeholics? Head over at lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store. Check out our full line of Rick Rack system. Those guys are awesome. They're down there in Sturgis as the time of this live recording along with Ciro nice. 3D. And uh, they'll shake your hand. Love to meet you. Let them know Law Abiding Biker Media sent you they'd love to hear that all right let's roll in to Let get back to sturgis and go visit guys like that okay yeah exactly. yeah now that we've made more contacts it'd be a lot of fun yeah. eventually we will when i, I retire camp. i want to camp the guy at 80th anniversary two more years we're gonna have a booth there eventually that'd be a mess law we'll abiding biker there no booth we will have a law abiding biker booth eventually but what we need to do is i just it, oh we, yeah that's cool 
But what you do is freaking, I want to haul like uh, everybody goes in trailers and we get a whole section to ourselves and shit. Yeah, we're going to have to trailer back. Yep. But, you know, we uh, everybody who's got You're camping no trailers and shit like that, you know, we can all right. head back. Uh, I can, I can, I got a car trailer. I can haul six bikes or something. That'd be awesome, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I got one too. I can haul. I, I got it's time footer. to do Sturgis again. All right. 20 foot car trailer? Yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. Hell well, yeah. I, got, I, have a, I have a camp trailer or my, uh, I have a camper for my truck. So, you know, I can sleep in the camper and yeah. it's all, definitely all the time bikes. to do it again. It's been a Derek's uh, parents loved us. We could go there again. I'm no, sure. I want to camp in the campground. I want to, I want to see the debauchery firsthand. That's where you see the I'm debauchery. Pass out for sure. ditch. I don't even fuck where <laughs> yeah. it's there. Wouldn't be the Hell first yeah, time. No. Wouldn't be the first time. We were going to the one night, but you stopped it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought you were going to get ejected out of the pickup truck is what I thought. No, I'm talking about the, the ditch. night of the uh, patron meetup in Sturgis. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. It almost <laughs> happened. <laughs> <laughs> that was the early early Are they stages. Down still, I don't think yeah. so. No, I think Not they're now. done. Nope, you're done. <laughs> Shut her down. Shut her down. Put that bike away. <laughs> All, All right, right, here we go. Yep. Day seven, Amarillo, Texas, to Gallup, New Mexico, to a fine hotel, four hundred twenty-five miles. Oh yeah, five star hotel, six hundred fifteen miles. Hot right. as fuck. Mm-hmm. No, four hundred twenty-five. Or, or so. Uh, uh, six fifteen saddle time, dude. Yep. You you ride in these days that are freaking hundred plus degrees. So it was it was over a hundred. Oh, know, it, the whole it, day. It, my bike's at one hundred eleven when yeah. we were stopped and it in just, traffic. It in zaps you. It just zaps you. You know, uh, got a little bit of uh, Route sixty six in. Was that in New Mexico there? Yeah, where we stopped at the little uh, where the John Wayne stayed or whatever. So we well, hold on. yeah, that's right. You got that's where you got the, yeah. The, oh, that's the, where shop, I got it. The little shop, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's where you got your sixty six sign. Yeah, I mean, cool place. So we yeah, this old lady here who was running a uh, running a shop in uh, uh, what is that at the, at the closed two, hotel? Two, it's called Tucumari. Tucumcari. Tucumcari. She, she told me how to say it on the documentary, but I I asked her, but I can't. Tucumcari. Yeah, New pretty cool. Um. Yeah, a little it's kind lady. of a ghost town. It's yeah, weird. Well, there's not much going on there, but pretty cool. Um, but they have like hotels right next to it. Like I wanted to mention that. Like John Wayne stayed there. Yeah, like you can like yeah. pull your bike into the, the like dirt garage. And did you see that? Yeah. yeah well, like, no, I remember we were coming into town there, and she saw it's, us coming. It's and sketchy. She pulled, she pulled up the cones, man, and and uh, just you know the the welcome mats were out yes. for us. And it definitely was, a bikers cool. stay oh, yeah. there. Yeah. And because it's yep. right off Route 66, but do you remember what I was talking about? Like it's gravel, and it's like a it's like a motel, yeah. but you can like pull yep. your bike in, and there's no garage doors, but you just like at least it's shade for your bike, and mm-hmm. there's just some sketchy. It's kind of sketchy, Patty, but the the hotel's shut down now. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They didn't have actual hotel going on anymore, and uh, no, I'm talking about the motel part. But yeah, yeah, well, yeah, right. Motel shut down now, and has been for a long time. And what was she saying that? Uh, they had filmed something there with John Wayne or something. Yeah, I believe he, Yeah, it. he filmed something and he stayed there for like a month and a half. Yeah. No shit, huh? Yeah. Yeah, at that hotel. But the hotel was and, closed. And Sturgis was taking care of him when he was a boy or something. Yeah, oh yeah, when he was a small boy. Yeah. Yeah, when he was a small boy. <laughs> but but this, there's other hotels there is what I'm talking about. Motels. Sorry. There's other places yeah, to oh, stay yeah, there. there yeah, was. Right, but right, this right. place, they took the lobby of the motel and yes. turned it into a gift shop. And the hotel was, sh- the motel was shut down. Where yeah. we were. Yeah, at that I one. was physically talking about across the way um, the, the motel, not where we were at, but you rode across, I rode through it where like bikers can pull, there's like sofas, like in the garages, dude. And they're like, there's no that. garage. Yeah, I rode through it. Cause I was blocking traffic for I you guys to get out. Stuff up. No, I'm not straight up. It's on the documentary. Bullshit. Kiss my ass. All right. So, anyways, <laughs> uh, no video didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah. I got it. Mm-mm. I got to go pull it right now. All right. So, um, yeah. Uh, horror movie motels, Arizona writer says, yeah, no doubt, dude. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was a cool little, cool yes. little shop. Had to, had so we rode time. through a section there and then we were able to get back, uh, you know, it was like what, eight, 10 miles, something like that. And then, uh, got back up onto the highway. An eight mile section right down there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. A lot of abandoned businesses. <laughs> I did. It's kind of a weird, like desolate, it's true shutdown area when we were riding through there. Like there's old like gas stations that are burned down and like stuff cars that are just left and abandoned properties. I just noticed that when we're riding out, it's really, well, it's really like weird, it, weird place, like just dried up and just a lot of these towns basically turned into ghost towns. You yeah, know right. I mean? You know, there's a couple of restaurant or a couple of motels or restaurants that have stayed open just from the minimal traffic they're getting. But you know, at one time it was, you know, look at like the, uh, rest stops with all the picnic tables outside where families used to pack their lunch in their little Oscar cooler. Right. You know, I mean, remember those? Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. And now people 
stop at McDonald's. So the they're just weeds and shit growing up through the picnic tables. Right. Yeah, yep. it was. It was just a really ghost town feeling driving through there. So we made it to, uh, from Get there, information. Sierra Blanca Brewery, Great information. Moriarty, Moriarty, New Mexico, as I believe how you say it. Um, it was just a, uh, that was just a guess on a place to go. Um, because we just needed a gas, right? And then we looked up a, a Googled something in Maury, Artie, New Mexico, um, Sierra Blanca Brewery. Going to make a that big a part of the one. documentary because he gave me a full yeah. tour, guys. Th- one of the main guys awesome. there. It's a brewery. Yeah, it was. And uh, it was so hot. It was like 110. And we're, yeah, we're, and gonna, just we're at a gas stop. Oh, my and God, and uh, we're going to go somewhere else. And it said something. We had shitty reviews or something. I go, fuck this. And I kind of scrolled through. Uh, my phone, and then I found that, yeah, the Sierra Blanca Brewery. Back in the industrial like complex. Five, yeah, had five-star reviews. I go, fuck it, let's go here. And so, yeah, we all went down to there, and it was just down kind of this, you know, kind of a <laughs> yeah. out-of-the-way freaking road out, off the interstate. Dusty, dry. Yeah, just, you know, and, uh, you know, it was, a, it was kind of a small little place. Cool as shit back in there. Yep, Good it beer, was. dude. Good beer. Good service. And I don't know if it just, really good beer. Yeah. And I don't know if it was because it was 110 degrees. It tasted better. <laughs> and right. Like, right, right yeah. yeah. But it was good beer. Good service. Good people. Gave me a full tour, like exclusive access because he knew he found he, out. He knew you were. He knew about the lab. YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He oh, did. yeah. Oh, yeah. It had to have been. And he saw my cameras. He did. He told me. And, and so he goes, dude, I'll take you through the whole thing. I go, okay. So I got an interview with him. Um, I got to interview him about the brewery and he took me all through the, uh, uh, where they make all of it and bottle it. And I got so much footage. So it's actually where be, they brew it, not where they make it. Well, they brew it and yeah, put it in the bottles cool. and yeah. the, the conveyor belts and shit. Oh yeah. You know, all that, all how that. it's made. You ever seen that show? Yeah. That's what I'm going to do an episode of how it's made. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was cool. The guy was awesome, man. And we hooked him up with some um, lab swag and stuff. I got his contact info. Swag. So hopefully, um, uh, if you get a chance, stop there. It was good. Interesting thing is they don't serve food there, but there's a local truck stop. Yeah, that was cool. We found out that we could order from a truck stop. And because they have a contract with the brewery, they they deliver the food there, which you know didn't take too long. Well, turned out all right. And we weren't yeah. in a hurry. No. Um, yeah. We yeah. liked the air conditioning at we that point. We did like the air conditioning <laughs> at that point. Yeah. It was just a freaking scorcher that day. So there you go. Mm-hmm. Why don't you back pick it up here? Bikes. Back on the bikes. We We're got another debacle Albuquerque, coming. Albuquerque, New Mexico, before we, we got debacle. our next debacle. <laughs> and yeah, so we're heading towards Albuquerque. And uh, after, it was shortly after we took off out of this thing, I think, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, no, yeah, a couple hours, yeah. yeah no, well, we, we stopped. We stopped for something because we had just gotten back onto the highway. Did we? There was some Maybe stop. I don't know if it was a gas stop or what the hell it was. But yeah, we just gotten back onto the highway, and uh, uh, I'm up front, and all of a sudden, everybody's kind of fucking gone. He we was a couple in back guys with, with us, B-Real. Yeah, B-Real came was up in next the back. to me. And, uh, you know, uh, we were texting. I was texting with Ryan and shit. You know, something was going on. And B-Real kind of started getting a bunch of freaking wobble in his front end. And like, what the hell? Um, so every time he get up to speed, 60 plus miles an hour, the damn thing is start freaking vibrating. So we had to, yeah, we had to get it the hell off the road and figure out what was going on. Cause it was, uh, yeah, 60, 60 plus miles an hour, just turned this real shit show and something was going on. So Some, yep. something was a problem. So we, we, we pulled into a dealership there. He got up next to me and told me, yeah, basically I can't go any faster than 60 you, I think I called up in my helmet because I had the phone in my helmet and I called somebody up front and said, hey, yeah. tell them we can't go any faster than 60 and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. We, so we, we, yep. we, yeah, we cruised in there. Uh, it was hot. It was hotter than shit. Did I mention it was hot? Yeah. We <laughs> we, we got into the uh, in the dealership and I don't remember which one. And uh, they tried to try to tell us that it was uh, just a tire Over, pressure problem. Yeah. Overinflated. Yeah, overinflated, underinflated, whatever the hell it was. Yep, Duke's HD, and right? Yeah. Ryan called it right away. He goes, bullshit. He goes, this was a freaking, uh, the front wheel bearings. You know, he goes, this is, this is, it's a front wheel bearings right, right. away. He told yeah, me, things, he described it to me. Up. Yeah. Yeah. So um, they didn't believe him right away or whatever. They, you know, they're going to diagnose it. It was and, almost uh, the end of the day. Did you mention that? Yeah, That's, we were. They were yeah, in a we hurry were, to get yeah, out of they there. They wanted to get the hell out. It was probably on a Friday. They wanted to go we're not dogging their dealership. Too. It's just the way dealerships work, guys. All over. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so the way like, dealers oh, we, do we, it. Yeah, we got we got to put air and your air pressure was off. So they put you know some more air pressure in it. It was still fucked up. 
And so still didn't ride right or whatever. And yeah, yeah, I'm sure shit. Yeah, it was a wheel bearing. So uh, we were there for a few hours and man, that Three or heat. Four. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, uh, heat, that heat will zap you, right? Like we said, yeah, yep. you're out there riding that long. It'll zap you. And we're all sitting around in the waiting room to get that damn thing fixed. And I'll bet you there's what, five or six of us passed out on the couch. Oh there. yeah. You, you fell know. asleep. Oh yeah. I'm probably people snoring. Fell I'm sure. Oh yeah. Like I know they have I some video of that. Not yeah. going to lie to you. True. Yeah. You do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was awesome, dude. Yeah. But no, and that's just the you know I'm not gonna get go down a rabbit uh, hole there too much. But that's just the way dealerships are. And B Real was with me, and I was like, no. From what you're describing to me, uh, I've ridden tire pressure ten psi over and under, and it doesn't cause that type of vibration. What he was describing to me, um, I went back with them with the mechanics, and uh, they were gonna they changed his tire pressure, but they did not go ride it on the freeway. That's the sad thing. They wrote it through the city. And I'm like, no, you need to get it up to 60, 70 miles an hour. That's where the vibration is and its bearings. And uh, so they finally came back and uh, I told them, I said, take it off. And they said, you want us to take it off and balance it? I go, yeah, you need to balance it. Because it looked like he lost a wheel weight too. He did lose a wheel weight too, but that still wouldn't cause that amount of vibration. And uh, as soon as they finally, I told him, take it out on the freeway please take it out on the freeway to 60 or 70. It is not a wheel weight and is not tire vibration. They did. They came back and immediately said, which it's a 2017 bike. So be aware guys, these components can go bad. They're just sometimes stuff out of the factory is weird. That's what's crazy. Um, He's got, yeah. you know, less it was than 10,000 miles on it. Yeah. You and know, that's why it goes out. I think that even they I were thinking 50 something on mine and no wheel bearings. No, right. Exactly. Never even touched it. Exactly. And uh, sure as shit, they finally admitted that it was front wheel bearings and uh, they that was after they put on the balancer and couldn't uh, get it to Jesus balance. Christ, dude! I know. I was trying to be really nice to him, not <laughs> you know what I mean. You, you got to be careful how you do that. And uh, I was telling him, no, just let's take it off, let's check it. And right, anyway, so they pushed in some, pressed in some new bearings. <laughs> you don't even know what Moving that on. means. No, no, I know what it means. <laughs> no, you don't. Pressed them in. Good to go. They press them hard. Yeah, your shit you know. pressed in, didn't you? Oh, oh good. God. <laughs> So uh, real good, bro. <laughs> the part you missed on here on my shit push is uh, <laughs> what movie was that? By the way, I have no idea. Oh, Training day, yeah, buddy. <laughs> the part I knew exactly when you said the lines, dude. I was like, oh, the I part you missed here. Pushed in. <laughs> <laughs> all right we're done no <laughs> training day so the part you missed like- is the minivan the minivan's not on here oh what minivan the one oh, that damn near shit. killed us yeah. oh fuck what Good a call. debacle that was that was so debacle. here we're, we're coming through albuquerque 111 was, degrees you know we had just gotten out of the dealership and it is bumper to bumper traffic now we would have sailed through this some bitch right if it had not been for the dealership stop uh but as we took off it's like five o'clock in the evening so we had hit traffic and we are bumper to bumper. We're in the left-hand lane. It is stop and go. And at this point, I think maybe our feet were even on the ground. And this freaking, it was a minivan? Was that what it was? It was an aerostar. It was going so it was like goddamn a, fast. I'm not I couldn't sure. even tell. It was maroon and it Yeah, whatever the fuck it was, something on the shoulder came blowing by us. I'm guessing 70 to 80. Yeah, it was 70 plus miles an hour. 110. Smoking. <laughs> smoking by us. Um, and the only thing that we could all, you know, all of us being LEOs and shit, every single one of us said he was running from the cops and the cops freaking terminated the pursuit because nobody drives like that. Just all you hear like, yeah, right. No shit. I was looking for it. Just looking for the nobody. Nobody drives like that, you know, because their wife's pregnant and they got to get the hospital. Right. And yeah, we figured, yeah, they're, they're running from the cops, but I fully expect them to wreck. Um, cause you had these little, um, there's a shoulder, but then when there was lights that had come up to light up the light up the interstate there in the, in the center median in the yeah well it was a and jersey barrier kind of, there was jersey barrier in the jersey barrier they had the median the cement median they kind of jawed out just a little bit and I don't know I'm very surprised this dude can drive I'm gonna give him that <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, freaking probably scrape heat. some paint on this. Oh, yeah. Positive attitude. Yeah. Wow. Good positive but attitude, Popeye. Dude could make it around those freaking, those jersey bears jutting out. Cause I, as soon as I saw that jersey, killed one of yeah, us. I was thinking that motherfucker oh, yeah. is going to wreck. But oh yeah, could have very easily yeah killed one of us. No problem. I mean, he went by us and yeah, my asshole puckered up. Oh I my mean, God. Bigger and shit. I'm just glad one of us didn't <laughs> drift onto the shoulder because. Yeah. It, yeah. Had we, yeah, had been we been over, yeah, had we just been over on the shoulder a little bit, 
yeah, had we been over just a little bit, I mean, just, you know, just sort of stop, putting your leg down, he kind of stopped. Yep. He's going to stop for you. Yeah, no way. It would have been a fatality, man. That's scary. That's kind of scary shit that goes up uh, out on the road there. So we're going to thank this. Of course, we love our patrons. We want you to uh, be a patron. We want to meet you in the private Facebook group, get to know you better. But hey, if the only way you can support us is through a flat donation, we understand. And we certainly appreciate that. We never balk. Thank you very much. At a flat donation. All right. All right. David Stanton. You don't have to read the emails. Just say names. Uh, Peter Lazenkas of Ontario, Canada, and Samuel Sinnell of Pawtucket, Rhode L- Island. Lawabidingbiker.com forward slash donate is how they did that. They put a little fuel in the lawabiding biker gas tank so we can keep this thing heading. going on down the road, you sons of bitches. On down the road. Nicely said. Nicely said. All right. So we're good yeah. to gallop. Yep, we're red roof in. We got to keep moving. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. So fine place. Just oh, really oh. fucking nice. Can Beautiful. You, ex- you want to on the record? Can you, you explain picture, yourself? Yeah. If you picture yourself at a five star hotel, this is the type of place you'd be standing on Worst the beaches hotel like the trip. Uh, Hawaii. Yeah. You right. know. Yeah. Well, right? And that what you'd think? <laughs> if I was standing at this place, this is what I would think. I'm sitting on a beautiful beach. Looking out over the ocean. Well, if you looked at their pictures online, you would fucking think that. <laughs> Correct. Is that the internet yeah. grand? Well, yeah. If, yeah, if it's oh, yeah. forty two dollars a night, you should go. Yeah, there's something fucked. It was more than that. Well, I knew we were at a I high class place. Mm. I knew we were at a high class place when I th- saw the Hispanic fellers under the tree <sighs> in the courtyard and a barbecuing. picnic table barbecuing and With, drinking, yep. drinking case of Modelo, drinking like mm. two Not cases Modelo. of Bud Light. Bud Light. Bud exactly. Modelo. Exactly. Up, Modelo. And I looked. I, it was funny. So me and Sarge, our room was right next to them, <laughs> and I looked at Sarge and I said, "I go, you know what? I go." I've been on this call a hundred times. Oh, fuck yeah, you have. <laughs> and then we I left to yeah. dinner, Never came back. Go, I've been on her. this call a hundred times, and I know how this fucker's going to end. <laughs> one of those guys is going to stab the other one. Exactly. <laughs> Throw him in the pool. <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah, I know how this sucker's going to end. Yep. Oh, my God, And he's dude. just looking at me, fucking 35 years of experience. He's laughing. He goes, yep. And the, oh, yeah, the out place was so fucking shady, too. Oh, oh, shit. Fuck. The funny thing is, those guys were actually... they actually stayed really cool all night which yeah. was surprising you know what well, I, mean? and, I was like know, oh they're gonna get loaded and the nice be thing was and- was that place was so shitty we basically had a cop in the parking lot the whole night so that was nice <laughs> <laughs> it's bad yeah. it's bad when i literally went out on the balcony with rob and we're looking over the balcony and or, uh, first of all our first room the air conditioner didn't work and the <laughs> gal down on the counter is trying to explain we're like after I fixed can, her copier. Yeah, can we just, yeah, we fixed their copier in their yeah. lobby because she could not figure, that's no shit. Rob fixed the copier and then our AC didn't work. She's trying to explain over the phone how to use it. Finally, we got a new room. So I'm sitting over the balcony looking across the way at a Motel 6. And it's bad when you're like, Motel that 6 motel looks good. Look, I was, I told Rob, I said, that Motel 6 looks fucking awesome. <laughs> well, shit, remember we went down to, uh, uh, to dinner at the uh, Applebee's. Applebee's or something, and fuck, there's nice hotels down there. Yeah, is, by Applebee's or what? Yeah, yeah. Again, yeah. I'm not don't let sure the guy how much who's spending tens of thousands of dollars <laughs> before you go on a trip, book your room. I walk, uh, by, I walk by Big Dad. I love Rob, but... <laughs> That place was a fucking shithole. If I went, if I walked into that place with my family, I'd have ate the fucking money and went somewhere else. Absolutely, yeah. dude. I would not have put my kids in that place. I would have fought the Motel Six people to get a room. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a room in your fine hotel here? Yeah, yeah. What <laughs> it's a the nicest place in town. But Jesus. it made for great, great story for the podcast, and it made for great documentary film because there's some yeah. funny shit i walk by goat and big daddy's room and they got the door open because it's like a sweatshop dude and their air condition is half working and he's up there on his bed with his underwear just big daddy sitting there and playing <laughs> on his bed dude i'm just like this place is sketchy as shit dude <laughs> oh my god i did sleep with my gun um, oh, fuck, right yeah. up by my side that entire night because i was waiting for ryan and i staged our guns strategically we, we told we each other did. where they're at where the extra fucking we legs were fucking, oh yeah seems funny nice. we actually did yeah. I said, dude, if, if you're by the fucking bathroom, mine's sitting over here at the fucking extra <laughs> bag. All right, mine's right here. <laughs> okay, fuck. <laughs> Jesus. Nice. Oh, so wedged a fucking chair against the door. All kinds <laughs> of shit. We actually did. So don't stay at the red roof. No, and, and gallop. shit all. It's yeah. a shithole. So it Rob moved, booked it. Moving, yeah. moving along. Um, uh, we went to dinner really quick that night. It was just a quick dinner. We Great were music on the stereo. Oh, my God, dude. Just jamming out. There's like, because that's the... Uh, what reservation? Navajo. Navajo reservation. So, Navajo, yeah. Navajo. I'm Navajo. searching a radio channel, radio station. I'm an Indian outlaw. 
And I, yeah, I come Cherokee across and Chuck Tall, my baby. She's, she's a Chippewa. Oh, wow, wow. She's so a one of a kind. kind. <laughs> there you go, live. So I find a, a radio station and it's playing classic country, which I like. And then the, it's, the it, DJ comes I, on and he's talking Navajo. <laughs> And then they play like a Navajo, I don't know, fucking like a, I mean. <laughs> Every three songs, it's a like Navajo, I don't, like a chant or something, yeah, right, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know what, up, you, yeah. what else you'd call it, but hey, it was interesting. Hey, it was. It was hey, just yo, like that. Yeah. And, was, we had, and I cranked that shit up on my stereo, and I'm, oh, this is exactly what it was. It was, dude. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is Indian Jones, dude. And so Ryan and I are riding through town with this shit blasting on our bikes. <laughs> we were, dude, just right, just. <laughs> Free, dude, just loving it, dude. Oh yeah, a little rain dance. Oh yeah, it, it sounds weird. good. It I does. mean, fu- I don't know what the fuck they're saying, but it sounds good. <laughs> Kill the white guy. Fuck, hey, I don't know. Hey, <laughs> get me a whiskey. Kill. I'm ready for a whiskey. It was <laughs> kill the guy on the on the new street light. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was fucked. <laughs> Rob Blaman. Kill oh, the whitey <laughs> on the white street light. <laughs> hey, yo. And we had tears coming out of. Her. I don't know why it was so funny. We we're so tired, and we had just had a few beers and uh dinner and we're just like oh my god dude this is just fucking hilarious and we're staying in the fucking red roof dude the whole night was just shit dude but it was fun and uh great time so let's move right into day eight and then we're got day nine and we're done here i can't believe these patrons are amazing like who would hang out this long with us jack wagons you know dude, shit right i wouldn't right. listen to me this long i would i i, I want to leave right now and i'm not a guys. patron i just want to get up and leave i'm tired of listening to you already right. dude. i'm ready to go to bed i'm i don't even listen to you guys <laughs> yeah but they wanted us to do part two of two so god bless them that they're uh hanging with us i see some have checked out and i get it i get it um, so let's roll right into day 350 miles. So we're in Gallup, New Mexico, and uh, not a lot, obviously, getting in there. I got up early um, with Be Real and some other guys. I got some great drone footage, though, of Gallup, New Mexico. Um, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Jeff and his pot <laughs> What's that? Jeff and his what? Pot hole. <laughs> Are you oh, reading, yeah, I'm yeah. reading ahead? Dude, a yeah, bit don't there. get ahead. You're don't getting get ahead. You're oh, way ahead I, I, got a good, son, I got a good story about that. I got son, a good story. Okay, so about Be that. Real heads back to California. We head up I to Durango some, correct. and Million Dollar Highway. It was awesome. Uh, we did some great what is the million drone dollar footage. Highway? Beautiful. It's uh now it's first like, we stopped in Durango, right? When that Durango yep, Durango's first at stop? one end. Oh, it goes from Durango shit. basically to Grand Junction. So we stopped in yeah, Durango Harley Davidson. Yeah, pretty sure Scooter got a rear ended by a goat. Oh, oh yeah. fuck! That was that fuck, day. Yeah. That? Explain it. Yeah, I I missed it. I was in the front. Yeah, uh, tell well, the story. Tell uh, the story. Okay, so we're coming up to a. We went this long. What the fuck? Yeah, no <laughs> shit, right? So we're coming up to a fucking. Me and Rob are up in the front, and we're coming up to a, uh, a stoplight, and the thing turned. Well, it was green when we went point. through. We're, it was green when we went through, and it was yellow. And scooter dynamites the brakes. What the fuck? The whole crew could have made it through. Way to screw your partner. Yeah, really fucked his partner. Good job, partner writing. <laughs> <laughs> really fucked his partner. Well, his partner yeah. taught him a lesson. <laughs> yeah, dy- dynamites the brakes. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, a goat was behind him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, goat was behind him and freaking clipped him. Swerved to go around him in his highway peg, clipped his yeah. saddlebag on a 2018 yeah. brand fucking new Dude, street. Because he was right behind us and we went through, the light was fucking green. Should have yep. easily, I mean, he dynamited the brakes. He's going to be pissed when he listens to this podcast, but he fucked up. Yep. We, we're, we're lucky. <laughs> we're lucky that's the only time that happened. Yeah. Just that shit's going to happen. Yeah. 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 He fucked up, apparently, yeah, from what up. I hear. So, all right. So, he, uh, we got to, uh, 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 we were ready. So the million dollar highway, uh, just to put it in perspective, um, runs from Grand Junction, Colorado. We stopped at the dealership there, got a t-shirt, got some waters, talked to some cool people. And then we were stoked because I was, it's on my bucket list, uh, life list to ride the million dollar highway. I've heard a lot about it. I've heard, heard it from other people. And uh, Rob, have you ever ridden this before? No, this was your first time, your first but I've time driven first it time. since this. That's right. Yep. You drove it with your boys. Yep. So That's it goes right. through Silverton and O'Ray. It goes right, and then you come it out ends at Grand- O'Ray, basically. Yeah. I mean, technically, and then you, the and then best you part. jet up to Grand Junction is where we stayed. So, right. But yeah. So from Grand Junction, depending on which way you're going, right? Yeah. Good call. Grand Junction through to O'Ray, um, which is a cool little city. That's the best part of it. Um, so I just can't say enough, and I'll let you guys say it real quick, and we'll move on. I know we're going long, but absolutely 
um, in there with uh, 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 Bear Tooth Pass. It, I'm just I, I'm big horn, big it's horn, right up there with those. Um, uh, Glacier National Park, beautiful, which was beautiful. Um, it was in there in those top five places that you guys have to see. It doesn't have guardrails. It's sketchy. <laughs> the road's yeah. actually pretty good. The concrete or the blacktop yeah. is pretty good, but no guardrails. Major cliffs. Uh, the guys. Uh, were really cool because as we do more of this and we get into this, they realize how beneficial some of the footage is um, when I have to stop and pull the drone and it takes time. But uh, Popeye and everybody was really cool about it and it helped me get some shots. So what's funny I about that I have you guys shit. riding. That's yeah. the so best shot. So what's funny dude. about that shit is, is that years ago, and oh, we yeah, still yeah, do, yeah, yeah. we still make fun of Ryan. Oh yeah, you got to. Yeah. Yeah, so we always used to make fun of him. We, when he first started this little endeavor of his here at Lab, uh, uh-huh. we used to make fun of him all the time. You, you put the fucking you know camera away. You know, you, we gotta you, go. You have the camera up in his our faces and shit. Yeah, right. like, fuck that. <laughs> got the thing. And we're going riding. Well, you know, I mean, it's cool, and we still make fun of him for it and shit, but like that. So anyway, we're on this road. We're on the million dollar highway, and uh, I rode up ahead to go scout freaking areas that we can film from. I know, from, dude. You know, and so we got some really cool drone footage for you guys that you're going to love. Uh, but it's just funny, you know, like, it you is. know, uh, that, uh, you know, now we kind of go look for shit and, and uh, you, you guys kind of realize the time it. investment. You're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got time. <laughs> we understand the time investment, which I'm a lot quicker than I used to be. But you guys actually realize you've seen some of the footage. You're like, who else gets footage like that? Like yeah. what other bikers are riding the million yeah. dollar highway right now? That exactly. get some drone shot of them riding the million yeah. dollar highway, you yeah. know. So and the, and yeah. The, yeah, and the operator comes down about clips your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. Uh, that might have happened. I about took out everybody, but you guys are used to. You're wearing helmets. You're good. Yeah, we were, no, we weren't. <laughs> no, we weren't. Right, right, right. Just for the video, we took them off. We left them with you. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I bailed out at the last minute. I'm like, I got to bail out. I'm getting way yeah. too close to these guys, dude. Yeah. But really cool. I mean, yeah, to have a guy you know who does all that shit and invests all that, you know, yeah, so it was a lot of fun, you know. Yeah. Like I said, yeah, first we used to give you shit for it. Right. Now, now we, you know, we invest it or we invest into it and, yes. and try to find you. And realize some cool of the benefits. Spots. Yeah. And I appreciate that, guys. Yeah. And we, you guys stopped a couple other times for me too, which I got some cool yeah. shots of those canyons. Yep. You guys, yeah, you get the benefit of that. So I know I, I appreciate it, dude, uh, that we've come uh, full circle on that. And you guys realize uh, I'm not just fucking off. I'm actually, um, no, I'm good. I got one here. Thank you. Rob's going for another brewski there. Um, yeah. So thank you for that. Cause that was huge. And we stopped, there's a small ghost town. I thought it was going to be bigger than that. I yeah. got some footage. That wasn't a big deal. So but we stopped here uh, and, mm-hmm. uh, what the hell is the name of the place? We stopped at there for beers and lunch. You remember that? You got that? Oh, yeah. And, and O'Ray, because I flew the Ore, drone. That's Ore. right. Yep. Yeah. O'Ray, Colorado. Quick now, lunch. There was another dealership there too that, uh, it was an O'Ray no. at a brewery in O'Ray, but I can't remember, bro. Oh yeah. Yeah, there was another spot there before Ore that uh, the dealership was at. And I don't remember the name of that one. It was between uh, no, Durango that was, that was before. and that's, Ore. Yeah, that's the dealership. We stopped at Grand Junction. No, we didn't stop. There was another one, remember? You pulled off. It was at like 11,000 feet. Um, there was a really? dealership in there, yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. realize I was I think there. so. No, it was probably one of those places. I think you just buy a T-shirt. Oh, oh gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I think, that's, I, I, cause I, think I looked it up on... Uh, Google or something like that in Silverton. Wasn't there, yeah, in Silverton. Wasn't there a dealership in Silverton? Yes. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. So in dealer, yeah, there's a dealership in Silverton there. So anyway, uh, we didn't stop there. We, we cruised past Silverton. We, didn't, we went down to Ore there. Now, Ore. Cool city. Cool damn city, right? You're so kind of you your wife you're, too, you're kinda, Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, you're kind of down in this bottom of this valley and this big old rock walls up on the side of you. And you guys wait, because this this footage, I got to give it to older lacquer here. Nice. This footage is going to make the documentary. At the I, risk of losing a dr- yeah, drone. And I guarantee you. Good call, yeah, almost. I guarantee you is going to be one of the highlights of the freaking documentary. Because we had to pressure the shit out of him to fly the drone up into there. <laughs> he did not want to. No. And we're sitting at lunch and... and uh, there was a there's like a couple that was sitting next to me and and somebody pointed out or somebody told them about this flag up I on the side of the hill. See, good call. And I and I spotted this flag, American flag, God bless America, up America. on the side of this freaking hill. And now you're talking a hill, it's a mountain. And the only way you can get this freaking flag posted up there is if you're a rock climber. It's the only way. 
you've got to you've got to have uh lions on you and you know you're you're a rock climber that's the only way this thing's like 1500 feet i think you said your drone had red yeah so it's like 1500 feet above the valley floor correct yeah on a cliff and and ryan i mean we're talking stiff winds and he got the damn drone up there to fly right next to this damn both in 15 flag. feet of it yeah 15 feet and that fucking thing is out uh you know uh straight and it was uh yeah hell of a hell of a ride i'm sure for that drone it was telling them high wind warnings and all this, this is why shit. fuck yeah <laughs> i'll do it for america bro america fuck yeah off to save the motherfucking day yeah <laughs> all right i had to do that but yeah he flew it up there. you guys were watching me and it was hard for me to find it <laughs> i know because uh, my phone was overheating i couldn't and, believe you found it yes yeah, yeah we're standing there his uh, all the warnings are going on all the yep. warnings yeah telling me this yeah, is bad i didn't even know your phone could overheat but his phone's <laughs> overheating and it is his i'm watching his phone and it's like kind of blacking out and shit needle and in a he's haystack, getting a, basically he, yeah he's getting a warning on it you know high wind warning and then like the phone's starting to kind of black out you know cut off it cuts back in and <laughs> pretty soon he's like he's shit. like and, and there he was you know I finally found. I was Lord. so happy. I was like, "Dude, there it is!" Yep, there he was, Lord or Savior Jesus Christ or something came <laughs> through and says, "Hey, there's American flag, right?" And uh, but yeah, opens up and uh, he he is within like 15 feet of this thing. I could have landed on it, bro. And I go, I go, did you zoom into that? And he's like, "No, there is no zoom on this thing." Are you fucking kidding no, me? No, you just fly in. Yeah, dude. couldn't couldn't believe it. But uh, yeah, he flew into that thing. Uh, great pictures of the American flag on the side of this hill. I was impressed. That might make the intro, not the thumbnail, yeah. but actually just yeah. the start of the film. Yeah, it but, was. But we were going ape shit. I mean, it was awesome. Now, it that was. Thing. And, and uh, you guys were lookouts for me, which was really cool. You guys yeah. got to see that Pulls side back of it. out. Cool as hell. Yeah, it was cool as hell. That was a good shot. Great reveal shot. So uh. after lunch there, yeah, we take off and we're heading back towards Grand Junction. And there, and we came up to a ghost town. Yeah. Uh, now, I think. Was it Sturgis that had heard about this little ghost town, or was it you? No, it no. was like on a sign or something. The ghost town was before O'Ray. No, yeah, it was before O'Ray. That was at the top. It was like at the summit. That's yeah. where Jeff, that was before. So Grand Junction, Colorado, we came over the top. Oh, my about bad. We passed peak. Silverton. At the peak is the oh, ghost town. Oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, okay, hold on. Just stand by. Let's back up a yeah, little bit. Back it up. Okay. So before the Back we, that we, ass before, up. Back that ass up. Mm, before, yeah. So before we come into O'Ray. We take off. Uh, so Durango, and before we come in Ore, there is, is a nice little ghost town of, was it, uh, what What were they mining there? You remember? Silver. Silver. Now. Silverton? Fuck you. <laughs> oh, jeez. America! <laughs> oh, fuck yeah! <laughs> So we 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 pull off there so old Ryan can get himself some drone footage or whatever the hell he's doing. Uh-huh. Now, when we pull off the main road, there is a pothole. Size of a fucking Volkswagen bus. At least. It will swallow a Volkswagen <laughs> fucking bus. Fucking dude. Now, when we pulled in, right, I went, wow, that is a fucking bottle. That will swallow a Volkswagen bus. I saw it from the rear. No to I fucking, lie to you. No to fucking self. Note to self. I laughed. I cried. And so we hard. go around this hole, right? We go around this big old fucking right. hole. I mean, this thing will swallow your bike. And we go up and Ryan does his bullshit, you know, filming and all this other stuff, which I'm sure will make the documentary. Five minutes. It's not like we're up there for eight hours and no, no. you forget shit. No, no, no. no it was quick. No. Yeah. So Didn't we're up pop there five a drone minutes. Right there. Yeah. And we we come to we we come pulling back out. And somebody forgot about the fucking hole, apparently. <laughs> Dude. So Sturgis I was is up front with me in the back drives right through the middle of this fucking hole. Right? Right through the middle of this fucking hole. And he winds How up. Did he not see he it. He winds up, up on his <laughs> <laughs> truck fucking pops all the way open, slams back down. He fucking hits the handlebars. <laughs> <laughs> I look back at Ryan. Ryan can't stop fucking. Oh, Ryan's I was crying. crying. I was Ryan like, is literally <laughs> crying. He's like, laughing so happened? fucking hard. He is crying. <laughs> Sturgis was bleeding later, wasn't he? Wasn't he bleeding? <laughs> I don't know, dude. I thought he busted Rectally. his fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I know his fucking ego was bleeding of that, but I think he had a fucking. I think God. his nose was bleeding. I can't, I thought he I thought he busted his nose up a little bit, but I look back at Ryan. And Ryan is laughing so fucking hard, right? <laughs> can't stop laughing but yeah his whole trunk pops open slam back down boom and i'm yelling at sturgis fuck jeff i go go close your truck thing the whole fucking thing popped open it's stuck open right okay so 
There's a there's a point to this story other than the fact no, that he hits, no point that he's other than the ass. fact he hits it right other than the fact he hits this big old fucking pothole. So fast forward, um, actually only fast forward about in thirty minutes. We go pulling into uh, what was it? Ore. Ore. Uh-huh. Ore. What happened there? You guys remember was was Sarge's bike? The uh-huh. alarm. The alarm. Oh, geez. So Sturgis's bike starts going off, right? The yep. alarm starts fucking going off. That's right. He was having yeah. problems with it. Having problems with it. Because he just hit so, a... No, stand by. Don't get <laughs> ahead of me, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so he he's having problems with it. The fucking alarm's going off. He's riding. The fucking alarm's going off. Okay. He gets the alarm to go shutting off, right? But that night we get into the hotel. When he's coming to the hotel, the fucking alarm starts going off. But he gets it fixed. Now, when we get back into Washington and we're only like an we're two and a half hours away from home. Fucking alarm starts going off at the gas station. He gets it fixed. It shuts off. It's fine. So when we get back home, literally done with the trip, he takes it down to one of the guys who's been a dealer or not a dealer, a mechanic here in town. Right. For 30 plus fucking years. Right. He's like, here's the problem. And he's like, you know, here's what's going on. He goes, I think you got a bad ground or something. Something's going on with your ground. Something's, something's bad with the battery. Something's fucking, you know, messing up here or there or whatever. And so Sturgis, Sturgis explains it away with, well, he goes, well, I got those cams in my bike. And I got these cams and they're and they're making it vibrate a whole lot more. And He's got new I cams, think, yeah, right. Yeah, I think the cams are making everything come fucking loose on the bike. And so the battery's all fucked up, right? And I go, and we're sitting at work one day and I go, what the fuck? You got short term fucking memory. I go, <laughs> do you remember you ran over the Volkswagen sized fucking hole? It happened right after yeah, that, Jeff. Your, <laughs> your trunk popped open. You fucking hit your head against fucking handlebars. And that is exactly when you started having problems with your alarm. He go, had problems oh, prior to Ori. <laughs> He had problems when we stopped so you could fly that canyon, and he rode back up the road. It was going off. Oh, is that right? It was 10 minutes after I thought that. it was after the pothole. It, it was. was it was 10 minutes bottle. after the pothole. 10 minutes. Right, Prior right, right. to Ore, though. We didn't even make the Ore, and we I stopped know, you to after. fly that canyon where you climbed down into the entrance to the mine. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's when he got the... I don't know what the no, fuck's going on. the entrance was after he hit the, hit the hole. Yeah, that's when it yeah. started having the first alarm yeah. problem was right there. Though. Yeah, yeah, so that big fucking hole that he ran through. Right. I love The thing that cracked me up the most was, oh, yeah, it was because of the cams. It was the cams vibrated the bike too much. The cams, the cams are the problem. No, you hit a giant fucking hole. You jumped a you thousand bounced, pound Harley, you Jeff. You bounced yourself up over the fucking yeah. handlebars. Jeff. Day eight, day eight, and it hasn't happened until you hit the fucking pothole. <laughs> well, it's funny as fuck. It's as soon as I told him, because we're at work by the time, he, you know, he's telling me this story. Oh, yeah, fucking cams, and, you know, this this fucked up, that fucked up. And I looked at him, and I go, you drove through the giant fucking hole, and that's what messed it up. And he kind of looked at me, and the lights went off at his head like, fuck you. <laughs> he, he realized I was right. You know, he, gave, like, he gave me that look. Yeah, We've all he seen me, that look he goes, from him. He, no, it was the cams. <laughs> <laughs> but what was so funny was I was looking over at you when he hit that bottle and you couldn't stop fucking laughing. I don't know why that was so funny at that time because it's Jeff and I'm just like, uh, yeah, I don't even. Oh my god! All dude. right, that took 20 right. minutes. Yep. Okay. Sure, so, no bock, but I know the audience appreciates just stupid stories like that, dude. All so right, we head, we get to Grand Junction, we ate Italian food, and went to bed. Next day, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Grand Junction, we did, oh yeah, we, that, that's actually non-remarkable. We had some time. You want to keep ripping on Jeff and Scott? You can yeah. talk about the third line up there. Oh yeah, good. We were in What's bed Scott at a decent time. They wore no helmets in that fucking 50 mile an hour crosswind. And when they got oh, the shit beat shit, out of them. Yeah. That's right. Fuck so it was that. 103 into Grand Junction. That's right. Yeah. Thanks for saying that. And uh, Jeff and Scott thought it would finally for the first time in the trip be okay to take the helmets off. And Scott was not happy when he got back because I got some good film for the documentary on that of him just getting beat to shit when it's 103 degrees and you got crosswinds like that so uh yeah they were pretty dried out when we got there so we actually got in bed at a decent time that night when you're talking day eight and the mm-hmm. kind of trip we've had i yeah. was oh. 600 plus miles all the time we're a little bit tired and late and up yeah. early and hot weather and all that kind of stuff so this is day nine why don't you uh why don't you guys pick it up Go ahead, asshole. <laughs> Not to you, Rob. <laughs> oh, thanks. All right. <laughs> Grand Junction to Boise, 620 miles, nine hours and 15 minutes of saddle time. Pretty much all freeway. So another 12-hour day, basically. Yeah. yeah. And Grind slowed hard. down through uh, Salt Lake. You know, there's about a 
45 minutes to an hour. We really slowed down there. We quick lunch at Subway and just kept going. Cooled down to about 80 degrees. This is the first day we got some, uh, well, I guess the day before, but this is the first day we got some good speed on some good windy roads and uh, cooled down a little bit. There were some awesome rock formations that we saw when we came through even up, Highway even 6. Up through, I uh, it was even up through a uh, million dollar highway, though. <sighs> those last couple days, man. You got to do a million. That was one thing that, you know, I looked at as like, shit, those first three, four days before that, you're riding over 100 degree weather and right. it just kills you. And I remember coming out of uh, uh, up through one million dollar highway there up to up to Grand Junction. And when we got there, I'm like, I feel pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm refreshed. But the days before that, I was just beat. And talk yeah. about a big difference between riding a hundred and riding like Ugh. eighty, and you get there and you're just like, all right, well, let's let's go do something. You start getting tired because you're like, oh, it's so yeah. relaxing. You're like, oh, the relief yeah. of that. Big difference in the in that weather. You know, it just really beats you up. You're riding something that hot. Yep, absolutely. And uh, yeah, so that actually felt very good. There's some beautiful. I guess I wasn't expecting that for that part of the trip. You we, know what I mean? The, the highway the six of that. Is it highway? Okay. Oh, it was awesome. Where we, we, we went, uh, oh. we cut North and went on that two lane highway where yes. there was the railroad and the rock yeah. cliffs and shit. That was awesome. Highway I was six. not expecting that after the days that we had had, I was like amazing. Yeah, it was pretty nice through uh, price, Utah, I believe it is. Yeah, I think um, you're right. Beautiful formations. Yeah, it was huge, awesome. Huge, huge rock great formations. Great breakup from what we'd seen before. <laughs> Correct. Beautiful. I mean, I mean, just awesome. Sorry, I got ahead. He's just got ahead of Bricks. himself. All right. So, okay. So, uh, we got the rock formations. We rode hard all the way into Boise. There was a period of time there where we were riding into a headwind and our gas gauges were just going. Oh. We did oh, have yeah. a hell of a headwind that we're losing. Yeah. We're losing more miles than what we had to go. I mean, yeah. the, the miles were ticking <laughs> off so fucking fast. I know that's what I was reading with Rick. Yeah. But yeah, our, the, miles, chat? the miles were nope. just ticking off. I mean, shit, we weren't getting 10 miles a gallon, probably. Yeah. I mean, they're ridiculous. You know, when you have the remaining miles to go and yeah. it's like constantly adjusting itself, you're like, the fuck's going on? I'm not going to make it. It just said 70 miles. Now it says 50. Yeah. You're just like, not gonna holy make it. shit, dude. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, we had some serious headwinds coming into Boise. We were burning a lot of fuel coming into Boise. Yeah, we got there. Boise, man, I'll tell you what, party mm, town. It is yeah. a fun, beautiful. We've been there like five times town. in the last five years. Yeah, we always it is end a up there. Fun town. Uh, I was, there. I won't tell that story, but there, uh, I was just going to tell some stories about some Don't guys I know Wolverine. that are, Bo- no, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's some, you know, some Boise cops that I know, but basically, you know, they're, they move some people out that uh, they don't want in there. And it's a, it's a nice, clean town. It's a fairly conservative town. Um, it's a big city, though, but uh, they do a good job of keeping it clean. It's a fun place to party. Um, I got in at like, you know, 11 o'clock at night and went to bed. Right, yeah. yeah pretty much what happened. Maybe 11.15. <laughs> Maybe 11.30 he pushed it. But yeah, Boise is a very, and I've said it in past podcasts on our Utah trip, we went there. Um, Andy and John and Jeff and I, and then uh, we hit it uh, years previous to that. It is one of the fastest growing towns mm-hmm. in the U.S. They say, and uh, there's some other towns like that too. Now, other interesting one is um, not to get off track, but I'll mention it quickly. I was recently there is Coeur d'Alene, that county, which is what's the name of that county? Um, what's that? Cooney. Co- yep. Cooney County. Yep, Cooney County. One of the fastest growing, but that Boise, that town, is one of the fastest growing. It's a very clean town. It's uh, obviously a very liberal town because um, it's a growing town. It's like, it, I don't it, think so. It, dude. Not what, for big cities. Dude. Not for- Yeah, you're right. Okay. You're looking at big cities. Okay, you're right. Not but, this has nothing cities. to do with Heather, the trip, but go ahead. Yeah, I just want to point that out. I'm, hey, what? it does have to do with the trip. Uh, Kootenai yeah, County has, has nothing no, to do with yeah. the trip. It we does, didn't even go through that area. We do. And we've ridden Kootenai County a lot, actually, on trips through Idaho, northern Idaho. Well, Boise, where the fuck county it is? Yeah, Ada. Boise's in Ada, Ada County. Correct. I'm just talking about Northern Idaho. Yeah, right. Where we we've didn't, where we didn't go this trip. But go no, ahead. yeah, right. We've been through there before. <laughs> Pretty good county. Mm-hmm. And I love riding through Lake Coeur d'Alene. Right around it. It's so, yeah. well worth it. But it, yeah, um, yeah, I, I get what you're saying in comparison to other yeah. big, bigger cities. It's not Seattle. And it's clean. It ain't LA. It ain't Chicago. Right. So as yep. far as a big city for the Northwest, yep. you know, yeah, it's, it's pretty conservative. Yep. We didn't talk about, I don't know, I got to digress. Amarillo, Texas, quickly, was a cool 
City. It was a cool downtown. Yeah, that was a really cool downtown area. I got up in the morning, did some drone work, off. drone work, yeah. checking around, and that was a really cool city. It was so. So Amarillo. we got into Boise about five. We went out on the town. We ate at the Butter and Creek. And we know right Ale. where to go. Oh, in hell, Boise, hell yeah. We, we, we own that town. We do. We ate at the Butter Creek Ale House. It was Wolverine, decent. Wolverine, you got a question? <laughs> <laughs> that was where it all that was started. When, that was when we first took over Boise. <laughs> yeah, right. It's on, like, what's notice mean? Seven years ago. Uh, yeah, you're on notice. We ate at the Butter Creek Ale House. It was pretty good. I, I had decent It was food. good. It was good. Good IPAs on tap. I mm. missed this next deal. <laughs> but we went to a German place. It was awesome. No, you, didn't, you, miss you didn't miss it. You were there. I don't remember. Yeah, you were there. We were sitting there, and then Sarge showed up with his buddy. The the uh, you're talking about the the they, Rick, the, the Rick they, they were drinking the big the German place. No, the yeah, but the Rick thing. Oh no, you were there. Uh, you were sitting across me. So we're well, sitting. Uh, you guys were laughing ahead. I didn't yeah, know. We, we were we were sitting. Uh, we, we went oh. to the restaurant. What was the name of the restaurant we went to? Do you remember? <laughs> I'm trying to remember, dude. Dang. So we went to some. Jeff pretty, would remember. Anyway, we're at some pretty cool place downtown, and we're having freaking dinner, and it's pretty nice. And it's the Bitter Rick's Creek talking to this guy. Huh? Bitter Creek Elt Elt House. That's where we. That's ate. where we dinner. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's where, where it was. This yeah, the Bitter Creek yeah. Ales, and that's where we were at. Oh, that's where it happened. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, BDK is sitting there talking. He's like some rich guy with a rich wife, yep. dude. Super he nice was. people. Yep. And uh, he was a biker. Actually, he was a biker. And uh, I don't remember what he did, but he was. Um, <laughs> Rick was talking awesome. to him, and he he was a rep. For oh yeah, for s- motorcycle something, some big he, motorcycle company. A rep, but he has car companies and motorcycle, and yeah. he was a rep. He for, was he, a big deal. Yeah, he was a big deal. He was a big deal. Uh, His wife was a big deal. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> so <laughs> so BDK, that was at the other end of the table. I don't know any of this. <laughs> I thought you were sitting next to me during that. No, no I was at the far end. We were oh. we were at the left. Yeah. So yeah, BDK goes to get up and uh, bends over to BDK get something. Fashion. Yeah, because he can't pull his pants up. And I didn't see it, but Rick was, or excuse me, Ryan was looking at him and like half his ass crack is fucking hanging out of his pants. Dude, he bends over <laughs> to pick something right in front up. Right his daughter's face. <laughs> and his two lovely daughters and his wife and I, they're looking and they're such proper people. They're like looking away and I'm just like, Bill oh, hairy ass crack. To see. Dude, Rick looks up at me. I go, dude, you just put your ass crack in those nice people's faces. <laughs> <laughs> Lab lost that business. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever contract we had there is gone, dude. Straight up, man. But, uh, oh, yeah, I told Rick, I'm like, and he just looks at me. I'm like, dude, you, he, I can't help it. I go, dude, you just have like a weird back and ass, dude. He can't. And the best thing he's was he's weird wearing, back and he's ass. Well, he was normal. wearing uh, like uh, basketball shorts when he when he, that happened. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> just, it was horrible. Those girls are still having nightmares. Oh, they're traumatized. Oh, yeah. They're in counseling and everything else. <laughs> Those girls are still just messed up. From oh, it, yeah. Got to get them right. some counseling. <laughs> Look at Lab Russ, paying for it. Russell Roberts in chat says, because he stays with Rick all the time when he comes to the Tri-Cities, he goes, he's showing his crack to me way too many times. <laughs> the thing is, Rick's one of those guys. Like, how do you, and I love Big Daddy. I've asked him, I'm like, how do you not feel it? Like I know no when shit. I, you get a fucking breeze. I, I would know if, if I bent <laughs> right? over, I yeah. know if my ass crack, he Fuck doesn't yeah. know. I know. I he don't doesn't know. It's either. like numb. It's no, numb. no feeling in his ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> guys, they show their, it out so many times. Uh, there's no feeling uh, anymore. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I don't get it, dude. Cause I'm like, I would know if I had a breeze, if I was bent over and I was wearing yeah. pants. How do you not know that your ass crack is hanging out? It's just, I guess he's so, used to it from over the years i'm just like oh i give him so much shit dude about his crack dude oh my god but those poor people and i'm sorry to those people i really am so we ended up one of our local watering holes if you go to boise idaho you have to go to the reef tiki bar it's up i had to put somebody else on notice it's just jesus christ it might have been a friend i don't know but oh yeah the night of jesus christ remember that yeah. uh-huh. like, jesus christ uh, yeah, i remember yeah. fucking hit me jeez louise it got kind of a debacle because here we are of course this is day nine and we're almost done guys and thank you for sticking with us and if you're listening in podcast format you guys are awesome i hope the stories have been fun and kind of how these trips go and some of the debacles and listen our shit show hopefully we have some tips and tricks in here that will help you on your trip like don't drink too much uh but (laughs) other than that um but uh the reef tiki bar 
uh, yeah, we had a ball up there, fun and one. it it is, and it's day nine, so Dude, we know everybody's Boise's going home. A fun party town. <sighs> I love it's it. It's a fun party. I would town. ride it to really Boise is. from here. Just I got in at. I already said eleven thirty. Sorry, right? Eleven thirty-five <laughs> may have changed by now, but um, you know, it, it is. It, it's a really fun place, and it's only you know what three hours from us. So it, I would ride there just to chill, and uh, it, it's a beautiful area to ride. Um, but the yeah, that uh, tiki bar is really fun. And the guys were kind of pouring on, of course, because it's last night. Um, we were actually Ubered it down there. We're, and uh, we used Uber a lot this trip. Um, we're not affiliated with Uber, but uh, it Too works much. out really well. Um, yeah, it works out really well because, you know, we're on bikes and everybody wants to, uh, you know, maybe tie one on some of the guys. And uh, it, it works out well that you can Uber back and be responsible and not have to ride your bikes and all that kind of stuff. So I strongly so, suggest it's it. It's stupid when you only have one beer and then you take an Uber. Yeah, I know. Well, but that, you can make order worth your while. That you happened can order a lot. An Uber yeah, make from, it you're correct. The if difference is ordering an Uber from your phone versus trying to find a cab number. Totally. You know, it's yeah, just so right. much more convenient. It know? is. You don't even fucking have Uber on I, your phone. No. I re-added it. Ah, boy. We used them in San Diego recently. Surge, I used them in Coeur d'Alene. Sturgis Jeff yeah. got his first Uber experience, which is fucking phenomenal. Did he actually get the app? No. Jesus Christ. No, but we're he taking don't even know what Uber is still. Who do we pay? Who do we pay? Oh, that's right. Wait, do I pay you? Do I do you pay, I pay with your cat? credit card, who, 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 Jeff? Who do we pay? <laughs> that was funny. I remember that. He looked. He goes, "Should we leave him a tip?" No, you do that in the app. It's good. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. No, no, but yeah. Did you, What's an it? app? What's it? Yeah. Oh God, dude. Yeah. He finally got his own phone. That's a plus, dude. No, he didn't. No, you're right. He still is. Oh jeez. What a no, train no. All right. No. All right. So no. next the day, the boys partied hard because it was last night. I'm just gonna say. I'm gonna, oh yeah. I got I'm gonna like leave six it at hours that. of sleep at least. Some of these guys tied it on and uh yeah go into day 10 and we'll wrap it up robbie uh so ryan and i went from boise to yakima 350 miles five and a half hours and we just motored down there was just me and you because yeah, st- why um, everybody else kind of left at different times right lee yeah. had to get back because they do fourth of july family thing yeah. and so, he's yeah, two me, hours yeah. more than us he's yeah. got so they left to him and jeff left early yeah i got uh yeah i got a couple more hours than you guys and me yeah, me and sturgis uh pound out the miles that happens last day sometimes we all just kind of yeah. do our well, own thing because uh, how everything works out well yeah. with stuff with ld and and uh you know every year it kind of turns out the same but yeah uh, i do a fourth of july deal yeah like ld said with a family every year and so we hammered out the miles and i got home and literally got off my bike and stepped in my pickup loaded up the camper and the boat and off i went to a family event and i don't know what the deal was with the Tri Cities guys, I don't know what time they left. Yeah, I guess they did. I leave. don't know if they know either. <laughs> well, Scooter wasn't up when we left. No shit. <laughs> me, oh, me and you got up. I know what we did, Rob. We got up. Uh, you went, went and flew. You went with me. We went and flew the drone. Yeah, and you guys were up. Uh, yeah, we were up when you guys yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd gotten we, like full you, eight hours of sleep, and then I was up. You, you guys, guys hit the road to leave, and we got on the bikes and went to fly. Yep. And then to try Scooter was. And then to moving. Starbucks. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, he was. Yeah, Scooter was. Oh, he, oh, we met him all for breakfast. Yeah, right. At, and then uh, we. What's the name could, of that place? Uh, Cracker Barrel. I told my wife about oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Nice yeah. little mom and pop place. Yeah, yeah. we like Cracker Barrel. <laughs> and it's uh, good. It was local joint. <laughs> Got my wife's <laughs> fucking Sturgis. I got my kids some gifts at the Cracker Barrel. They're good for that. Take them home. Told them I got them at 13 different states, but they don't know any different. Oh, yeah. I, just I told them, oh, I got these from all over the trip. Perfect. Bought them all at the last place, dude. Nice. <laughs> I just, like, you can't carry it. You know what I mean? You're a better man than I am because I didn't buy shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was, you're lucky I did that, but yeah. And then we, uh, we went to Shell. Told them we're at Shell. They went to a different Shell. We lost each other, so they we split up. But that's that right. Yep. We Starbucks up and uh, yeah, got some, that was a beautiful morning actually in, in Boise um, that day, got some good footage. So that will probably make the documentary and uh, yeah. What else? What else you got? Anything? It was just me and you. That was a long ride. It's always interesting the last day because you're tired and you yeah. know, it's over right and you've had this high yep. of just days of like not even remembering what you did. Like a lot of it came back today. Yeah. Talking on these notes, you know oh, what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I make some notes, but yep. even some notes I didn't have, I was like, it, forget it, about it, shit. And yeah, yeah, it spurred certain things. And I love the video coming out six months from now. It relive the trip, you know? Yeah, totally. Yep. Yep. I'll probably start uh, editing it in fall, maybe October, November ish. But last year I had it out mid November. So that that's my plan. And uh, of course, some of the patrons 
will be on there and all that kind of stuff. The guys in here, you've been awesome. Thank you for hanging with us. I know it's very long, a two-part series. Uh, I have an interesting comment. Arizona writer says, David, they had to get the snow plows out up in Cheyenne last month. Hmm. They got hammered pretty good with hail. When I was, that was when I was on my trip. Fucking hail to have no, to get hang snow on. plows out. Yeah, go ahead. That was when I was on the trip with my kids. Okay. And we didn't go to all the way over to Cheyenne. They had three foot hail drifts. Wow. You got to be kidding no me, shit. dude. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that. No, I'm we glad were, I haven't. I was in, uh, I was in Wyoming at that time, but I was hmm. two hours uh, west of Cheyenne. I was in Rollins. I think it's about Rollins, two hours, yeah, whatever right. that is, hour and a half, two hours west, but none of it there at all. But yeah, they were saying there was three foot hail drifts. <whistles> Can you fucking imagine that on your bike? No. That's what they're talking about here, dude. It's just, yeah, that's insane. So um, anyways. Hell of a trip. Hell, hell of a trip. A lot of fun. Good memories we got to talk miles. about. How many guys, um, before we close it out, get to sit around on microphones live worldwide right. and get to talk and reminisce about the details of their trip? You know what I mean? We would never do that. Think well, about it. Right now, it's us three. <laughs> what did I say? How many get to? Oh, yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Three. Sorry. I thought yeah. I said four or something. No, not right, many. Yeah. You know, if like, we, we, we could bring yeah. in a few more, but yeah, not many guys get to do that. Yep. And uh, that's pretty cool. Drink beer, that. have a and, steak. And yep. that's pretty awesome that uh, that we have this community that you've built, Ryan. Yep. And yep. Uh, You guys too. Everybody's yep. a part of it. Yep. But uh, yeah, it's really fun to be able to come in here and be able to do this and talk to everybody and have a good time and and uh, share our experiences and our our uh, our shared experiences right with everybody and we had a great time man and it's uh, it's fun to share share what what we all have in common of this motorcycle world and keep this thing going on down the road yep absolutely awesome a lot well of fun. said dude and uh, and I hold, before yeah, we, before we no, get we too crazy here go. Go. before we get too crazy I want to give a shout out I am uh, our honor guard commander for our honor guard team. And uh, we recently lost an officer here at uh, in Kent PD, Officer Diego Moreno. Thanks for and, mentioning. Yeah. And I know a lot of our listeners are, uh, well, they all are very patriotic. They're former military. They support yep. our law enforcement and all that stuff. And I just want to give a shout out to him and his family, Diego Moreno, Amen. for the sacrifice that he gave here in Washington State. And I appreciate that. For sure. Yeah. There you go, guys. Lose an officer like every three days in this country, but very few make the news. So I appreciate you bringing that up. And uh, I know Robbie appreciates that too. So the tough one with that was is that uh, his kids were about my my uh, kids' age, and that's what makes them tough. And like I said, I go to most of these, uh, most of these funerals around our area. But hey, not to leave you on a sad note. Right. But hey, yep. we appreciate the support here in a law-abiding bike community. We love you. We like to ride with you. You guys get a chance. Come meet us. And uh, anytime you got to, we'd appreciate it. Heard it right there from Popeye, and I appreciate that, man. Just freaking awesome. Thanks for you two uh, for hanging out this long, because I know, you know, we tried to, we, and we actually stayed on track pretty much. Okay, we didn't. But, you know, there's just only so much you can do. You just try to pound through that kind of stuff. All right. So. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, what up? Hold on. We got, a, we got a shout out here to give here. We got a little trailer. We forgot. In the future, folks, hang tight. We got a big old, big old episode coming to you guys here coming up. How to ride the Yukon and Alaska. I got oh, yeah, a nice. brother of mine that I work with, and we're gonna bring some stuff to you about how to how to hammer that down. Now he's on a BMW. We're gonna he's, talk about that. He too. is gone right now. He is up right in the Yukon. That's right. And he, he is. is he is right now. He is gone. He is up there. We'll bring it to you live at some point. Maybe. I don't know about we, live. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do, we'll do it live. One live for sure. If, well, we'll, ask we'll break him. him in. We'll ask him. He'll be let's fine. A, let's ask he'll him. Be, he'll be fine. <laughs> he'll be fine. But he is right now. He's coming into Dawson City, Yukon Territories. I told him he's got to go there. I got a little insight up into that area. I used to work up in that area. But anyway, he's, he's riding up there, and uh, he'll bring some stuff to you guys. I'll be able to bring some information to you guys. Gonna be some. Uh, it's gonna be fun. Good stories. A lot of like what we brought you tonight, and uh, we'll get some good information to you about that area up in the Yukon and Alaska. One of the patrons just got back from up there. Nice. Yeah, we'll do that, and then we're gonna get Jonathan in here for Iron Butt and you, and we just got all kinds of stuff coming up, guys. Thanks for being here this long, you patrons. We're gonna kill this live. Thanks, Popeye. That'll be some fun episodes. Okay.
Peace out. Thank you, everybody. 